Hello everyone, and welcome to Survival Live. This is the first live stream I've done of any type in 2023. It's actually really crazy to think that it is 2023 already, but hopefully everyone's had a good new year so far, and I'm really looking forward to where we can take um, the channel. Not only that though, but also this series throughout the coming year. I believe our last stream was on the 17th of December, so it's almost been a month. And my channel's been growing so quickly, I believe I've gained 50,000 subscribers since the last stream. Maybe 40,000, but it's definitely been a very large number. So, welcome to all the new viewers that I'm sure there's lots of. And here we are in my survival live world. I'm going to give a quick little overview of what's going on here for anyone who just started watching the series. As we've now had quite a few parts of the series, so I think it's important that everyone's kind of on the same page. In this world, we have a bunch of different things that are going on, but most of our projects have been limited to this small castle base in the mountains. That is going to change soon. We're starting work on a new base. We also have next to our base here a farm and a uh, very low quality sort of monument for the dragon egg here. Of course, we are in this crazy mountain seed. If you want to know the seed for this world, I can put it up right now. Actually, that's in caps lock, so that's probably not ideal, but anyway, there's the seed, and the seed's also on the Discord if you want to just copy and paste it easily. And yeah, this is basically a little bit south from spawn. Uh, it's a seed I found a while ago and we're just in this crazy mountain biome. I think right now our coordinate is, yeah, like 256 basically. Uh, so we can go about 64 blocks taller than this if we wanted to. We also have a bunch of allays from Woodland Mansion raids we did. And again, welcome to everyone in the chat. As you can see from all these skeleton skulls, we either had a lot of charged creepers, or we raided quite a few of the ancient cities, and for us, it was the ancient cities. And so, in the last episode, we were doing a ton of ancient city raiding. In fact, most of the loot we got is still in these uh, shulker boxes. In fact, I believe we left a couple shulker boxes in one of the ancient cities, um, but I might have eventually taken them back as well, I'll have to check that. Now, where we're going to be moving our base to eventually is just over here, it's not too far. Uh, kind of still within this crazy mountain range. This mountain range actually has every single mountain biome type in it, except for maybe meadow, but I think there's meadow somewhere too. So this is kind of the area. We need to flatten out all this stone, and then as well as that, of course, you know, build the actual base. Uh, but I think this is a good area for it. It's not super high up, but it definitely has that height factor to it. Lots of nice biomes around, and overall a good place to sort of be creating our base. Uh, we did just get a mending villager a little while ago as well, so we definitely have sort of uh, things starting to happen in this world, but I'm thinking stuff like a massive villager trading area and all the kind of things that you can set up in a late game survival world, that's definitely going to be our next goal. We just can't do that that easily at this current little small base, super, super high up in the mountains, so something a bit lower down um, and a bit larger or a lot larger <laughs> is kind of what we're looking for. But again, welcome to everyone. Hopefully you're having a great Saturday so far. And I think actually in this chest is mostly just enchanted books we got from the ancient city. In fact, I think they're all from the ancient city. There's a uh, swift sneak in here. We did put swift sneak on the leggings, so we're doing good. A big issue though is we don't actually have feather falling uh, boots, so it definitely makes the elytra a lot more dangerous. So we'll take a look around here at what enchantments we see, uh, if there is anything in terms of feather falling, which I don't think there is, so unfortunately I will have to just keep waiting for that. Now, obviously there's a lot of different things we can do on our way to sort of getting this mega base, and I think, you know, stuff like for instance even upgrading our armor, but for now we'll probably start by working on digging away some of that stone, and you know the crazy thing is because of course we don't actually have netherite tools yet, something we should probably work on in this episode, uh, we're not actually going to be able to mine for that long because we don't have a XP farm either, so our tools will get worn down, uh, and we might have to uh, heal those. I just noticed we have two more enchanted golden apples in here, and there's four in here, and there's one in the wall, which means we have at least seven enchanted golden apples, which is an absolutely crazy amount of enchanted golden apples. Also, thank you to the people who are joining the iSquad, that is my YouTube membership program. Uh, and if you want to join that, I think it's three dollars a month, I believe and uh, there's a bunch of benefits on there like being able to see exclusive posts and as well as that having access to all of these amazing emojis and emotes that we have that are really great for streams but you can even use them in uh, comments if you want.
So, I think we'll probably, uh, probably start by digging away some of that area. And as well as that, of course, we do want to eventually kind of sort our items. I'm sort of torn, though, with whether or not we should sort the items now, or maybe wait till we actually have a really good storage system. Also, something I might do off-stream, or maybe even just for the interest of it to do it on-stream, is to plan out what this base is actually going to look like. Of course, we have, like, this area we're flattening out, but eventually we're also going to have to work on an actual design for the base and gathering materials for it as well. I think something that we could also do, and I've seen a lot of people do this when making a mega base, is to actually make like a temporary base next to the mega base. So we might end up doing that, just sort of a utility area where we have perhaps a villager set up already, and we can kind of start from there. And I think we got some blocks marking things out above there, because I just mined through some nether rack, which is interesting. Uh, but yeah, of course, overall villagers too would give us access to a lot of the things we need. Uh, so maybe once we're done clearing out a bit of an area, we could actually work on getting the villagers starting to be set up. I'm um, also getting a bunch of golden apples and just all the things we'll need for that. It's actually funny because I think we have more golden, like enchanted golden apples at this point in this world than we do the standard golden apples. And so uh, definitely um, we'll have to get some of the more normal ones for the villagers there. And we'll do that. And someone says to kill them with a sword or a bow. Not sure what you're responding to. Maybe the LAs don't want to kill the LAs with a sword or a bow. And if you do, of course, have any questions about Minecraft, anything you want to ask me, uh, feel free to do that in the chat. I try and respond to as many um, messages as I can. Although, um, as you can see by the chat, it's not the easiest thing to do. Uh, and of course, we're going to go through here. Is this a fortune shovel? No, it's not. We're just getting a very high gravel rate. Now, of course... Um, Flint will drop from gravel one in every ten pieces. So technically, if you took flint and you mined it, or if you took gravel and you mined it again and again and again, eventually all of it would turn into flint. If you have fortune, that chance is increased, which is kind of fortunate. I mean, I understand why it works that way, but it is an interesting functionality. One of the reasons why a fortune shovel is almost never a good idea, but either way, um, so because of that, if our shovel was fortune, uh, fortune 3 especially, we would be getting every single piece of that gravel turned into flint. Someone says, what is the easiest way to move villagers? Uh, probably boats, and of course it depends on where you are. I guess the best thing would be to row them through the nether in a boat. Um, there are a lot of different tricks to moving villagers. Minecarts can be good as well if you need to move a ton of villagers. But generally the best idea is to just move two and then to create a breeding area. I do have some villager breeder tutorials on my channel and also villager trading area tutorials. Uh, and of course there's a bunch of different ways of setting these things up, not just with the tutorials I've done. As of course all villagers really need is a lot of beds and kind of an area to... Um, uh, we'll have some food from and so sometimes you can have an automatic system that gives them food or sometimes there'll be a system where you just throw food at the villagers kind of depending on what you want to do and that's actually one big benefit of mining in the mountains here is we get those random emeralds around which is kind of cool not insanely useful but definitely a nice thing someone says they're new can you get enchanted uh golden apples uh, by enchanting them an enchanting table, I think is what you're saying. And no, you cannot. Um, however, at one point in Minecraft's past, uh, you were able to craft the enchanted golden apples. So enchanted golden apples were crafted with eight gold blocks, which of course made them incredibly valuable, having, I guess, about a stack of gold ingots in them. Uh, but later on, they were decided that was too overpowered and it did not fit with Minecraft's sort of balancing system. And so because of that, from this point onwards, I guess, I believe that was the combat update when they changed that. Uh, so, of course, if you're playing before the combat update, you can still craft Enchanted Golden Apples. But the combat update was a very, very long time ago, a very old update, uh, as, of course, that was in, uh, well, that was 1.9, of course, was the combat update. Uh, but yeah, at one point you could, but unfortunately at this point the only way to get them is by finding them in loot chests. Someone says, will I upgrade my armor to netherite? I definitely will. I will probably do that soon, maybe on today's stream, maybe not. I sort of want to do a big variety of different things on the stream. And speaking of the stream, if you're watching the stream right now live and not on the replay, feel free to like the stream, as if we get a bunch of likes early on in the stream, YouTube will show it to more people, so we'll end with a larger total viewer count, which will make even more people see the stream. So feel free to like that, and let's see if we can get up to a high number of likes on the stream there. 
there. And we're going to finish up this bit of a mountain here. And as you can see on my pickaxe durability already, it's definitely getting pretty low. That is the one thing that's um, unfortunate about sort of instantly mining, is because you're breaking so many blocks at once, the pickaxe durability definitely does go down at a really significant speed. But I guess if you were to, you know, take a literal pickaxe and try mining this much area out, it definitely would break after a while, so it does make sense. And uh, overall, I think we're getting a decent amount of stuff done here. I'm not sure if there's quite enough space for a villager area yet, but we'll keep cutting away at this mountain for a while. And up here, there's a kind of a higher bit of mountain up there. We'll probably deal with this bit a little later. Uh, we definitely will get rid of it, but I'm thinking for now, we'll probably just keep cutting away what's here. In fact, this kind of ends pretty close. So if we mine from here, like diagonally, we can probably get to the edge of there fairly quickly. And... Um, Someone says, how do you make the ender dragon spawn after you've killed it? Basically, what you want to do is you want to get four uh, of the end crystals. Now, end crystals are crafted uh, with a ghast tier. So the most important thing to do is to go to the nether and to fight some ghasts if you want to do that. Uh, and you need four of those end crystals. And once you have the four end crystals, then basically... Uh, you place them down, um, and then uh, all four of them are placed down in the central end fountain, is what it's called, that sort of bedrock structure. Um, some people think that respawning the ender dragon requires the dragon egg, in fact, quite a few people do, uh, but it is not needed at all. Um, all you need is those four end crystals, and then, yeah, you can resummon it that way. In fact, those end crystals, uh, if I remember correctly, are also crafted with eyes of ender, which is kind of interesting because, of course, Eyes of Ender aren't really used that much in Minecraft for many recipes or many things. And so it does make crafting end crystals one of the few uses of that item, outside of, you know, just throwing it to find the uh, end portal. So that is kind of how you resummon the Ender Dragon. And the one thing to be aware of is that the Ender Dragon does give a huge amount of levels normally, but when you've resummoned it, uh, then it doesn't. It does give some levels, uh, definitely more than like a creeper would or something, uh, but way, way less than it did originally. So it's not necessarily worthwhile to defeat the Ender Dragon a second time. Uh, the only real thing that it's worth, well, there's two things actually you can do it for. The first thing is to get more of the uh, Outer End Island sort of portals, the portals that lead you to those Outer End Islands. You'll get one more of those each time the dragon spawns, up to a limited amount, because of course there can't be hundreds of those around on the main island. And the second thing is if you forgot to get dragon's breath, so of course glass bottles give you dragon's breath, always a good idea to do that. And I found what I tend to do in Minecraft worlds is I actually will resummon the ender dragon and I'll resummon it just to get the dragon's breath there. Someone says, hi, please notice me. I've noticed you. And we'll go this way. Someone says they cannot get ancient debris from bed mining in levels 14 and 15. When someone does a conventional method of getting a material in Minecraft and they aren't able to get it, what I generally tend to say is just to do it for a longer amount of time. I know it's sort of a lame answer, but at the end of the day it is basically what you want to do. Um, if something doesn't work and you've been doing it for a long time, because of the way that random generation works, it's very, very common for... Uh, these kind of things to sometimes take a long time, or sometimes the first bed you explode will give you no netherite. But if you're doing the method correctly at the correct Y level, um, you could always use a different method, but it's not actually going to give you a higher chance of getting something unless the method itself is quicker. Uh, so I would suggest just mining for a longer amount of time and maybe trying to find the right biome to mine under. Uh, especially like a basalt deltas, you'll definitely will go slower there. And uh, there's that. Someone says, how does Ender, um, how does Dragon Egg spawning work in Bedrock Edition? It should work the same as in Java Edition. Uh, you just get the one Dragon Egg after you defeat the dragon for the first time, and that's about it. And we're going to go over here. Someone says the fastest way to find the Nether Fortress. Um, again, with Nether Fortresses, and I actually get this comment a lot, this is a really, really common question, is how to find the Nether Fortress. Because what will often happen is players will be sort of going through the game, and then they'll get to the place where they need to find that Nether Fortress, and they can't. Um, the only option you have outside of just raw exploration is to use a Seed Finder there. So we'll do that. And I think, actually, you know, once we're done mining through this, we're going to actually have an extensive amount of stone. The problem is, is because, of course, the area around us is not, um, you know, it's also made out of stone. It's not really the best building block. Now, we have a super chat here 
from Evergreen Goddess, who actually recently joined my SMP. If you want to join my SMP, be sure to join my Discord. There is a link in the chat there, and there should be a link in the description if you're watching the replay. And it says, watching with my husband and daughter. We've had so much fun playing on your SMP. There you go. Uh, this last week. Thank you for providing amazing content and providing space for community building. We appreciate you. Well, I really appreciate the support, and I'm so glad you're enjoying the server. We definitely try and have a server that can cater to everyone. Uh, and if you're someone who there's a zombie there <laughs> if you're someone who you know um is not really sure about the smp experience um everything on our server is fully moderated so we make sure that it is uh you know if something's destroyed by someone um that you can actually have your builds be sort of um basically protected so you won't have anything uh, any time you put into the server be wasted and it does make it uh, a really safe server so i'm so glad that you enjoy it now um, I think we might stop after this bit. We can probably go on to getting the villagers and then Because uh, the villagers there is a village nearby So we just have to get like two villagers over here We do have to move the portal because the portal is like in the wrong position and you'll kind of see what I mean in a minute here uh, But right over here we can yeah We can probably make the villager area around here kind of on the edge and then eventually we can integrate it into the base or just move it if we make like a really temporary setup that could work um or technically what we could do as well which is oh there's a mine down there which is or it's actually i think a path to an ancient city what might actually be a better idea as well is to just make a villager area a little bit further away I keep, I'm thinking, why am I going so fast? It's because of the swift sneak. We have that on our shoes right now. We'll just keep this as a little protector there so we don't fall in. Uh, but yeah, we'll probably go back to the village, take a little kind of inventory of what we even have around there, and then we can get a better idea of what we could do in terms of setting up a villager area, maybe temporary or more permanent. Just, of course, because there's so many different resources we're going to need uh, to build this base, but also just to have, you know, a good long-term source of tools and enchantments and things like that. And the one issue I've always found in Minecraft is moving an existing villager setup to a different area is almost always super difficult. So we're not really going to try to do that, I don't think. Um, we could definitely get a couple uh, temporary villagers here. Now, there's actually some uh, unbroken bone blocks here, I'm not sure why. I, I usually tend to mine these as much as I can, and the reason why is that, of course, each bone block turns into nine bone meal, and nine bone meal is really useful, and so just to have tons of free bone meal, almost always worth it to pick that up, unless, of course, you know you're in a dangerous situation, and you have to focus on something else. Now, I believe with the portal to the strongholds, like, down there, so the portal to our base, we do have our light drawn, just want to check that, um, should be right over here, it is, there we go, we have another... Uh, skeleton here, of course. I was going to try and hit it on the way down, but I realized I'd kind of fall off the edge there if I did. So this portal leads to our base, and I believe up over here, this is where the portal that goes to our uh, villager area. So right over here we can do that. And then uh, from the villager area we can probably... Uh, get ourselves maybe a better pathway between the two areas since I feel like we're kind of going back towards where our other villager area was um, Or our other portal was our other portal is yeah, it's like right over there So we can probably get a direct connection if we want to get those villagers Transported or if we want to make a villager area over here Someone says how long do I plan on streaming? Uh, well, the stream just started so probably almost another three hours, which is pretty cool I do tend to stream for three hours from 9 a.m. PST to noon PST or to noon or from noon EST to 3 p.m. EST So whatever that is for you on Saturday, uh, but not always sometimes I will stream on different times But generally it will be at this point. So as you can see the portal is a bit far away um, So what I'll probably do do is we'll actually this is a spawn point portal so we may as well make a second portal but it probably will end up linking just because of how these things tend to work and we'll do that and we have a message um from kira because she is a member of the i squad and what you can actually do if you have a membership to the channel uh, is spend uh, send a sort of special highlighted message uh, every i think it's every month and it says hi i and chat happy weekend everyone uh, and happy weekend to you too, Kira, and thank you so much for the uh, membership chat. Right, I forgot, we have in here like a ton of different materials we had earlier on. Um, I feel like a plan is sort of what we need in this kind of world, is to definitely get a 
coherent project going. Now, of course, we do have our uh, mega base, uh, but I think as well as that, we can work on maybe something else. So we have, there's the Mending Villager. This thing should be kind of more protected. And I use the Cartographer to find, to find a Woodland Mansion in a different episode, I believe. So we... Let's see what we have here. I, I, we have the masons too. Now the masons tend to be your best source of emeralds. As you can see, or 10 stone for an emerald. But they do need to be zombified. So if we want to set up zombification, we're going to need to get a bunch of weakness potions. And as well as those weakness potions, also we're going to need uh, the golden apples. So both those things are not really out of uh, limits. And in terms of a villager setup so far, we don't have a ton of stuff. So I think that you know, being able to move a couple villagers here, um, or move them kind of out of here, isn't going to be an issue, and it's definitely something we could do. Uh, I guess also some more beds might be smart here, because we want to encourage those villagers to breed so we get more of them. And then, of course, with more villagers, we can just transport some of the extras uh, back to our sort of new base. And yeah, this definitely is not the best place for a portal. I'm not sure why I put it here. I might have to take a look back, but either way... Um, we do have this portal here, and it does lead us back, kind of. So we're probably going to try taking that extra route, see if that route leads us to where we want to go, because I believe my other base portal is up here. No, it's not. It's probably close, though. There's a lot of unrated things around here. We should definitely take a look. There's the other portal. It's still pretty close, so we could, we could definitely make kind of a pathway from here to the other area, uh, and we'll go over here. And we have uh, two super chats. The first one is from Black Cat Walks Alone, and it says, Hi, I'm not so active player, but I do love your vids. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for the super chat, and I hope that um, you maybe can find a world that you enjoy. We also have a second super chat, and it is from Dirtbag, the long-term donator, and thank you so much, Dirtbag, for a $100 donation. It says you love my videos, and you're my biggest fan. Well, I think you definitely are. You tend to donate... Um, a lot so thank you so much for that and thank you for everyone who participates in the stream even just watching the stream i really appreciate everyone for all the support they give um something i've really been thinking about a lot uh, as it is of course now 2023 thinking about the new year thinking about last year um for people who don't know i started last year with about 7,000 subs. So I went from 7,000 to 274,000 subscribers in one year. In fact, a little bit under a year. And so it's been an incredible journey. And I mean, literally just since the start of this year, I've been gaining uh, insane amounts of subscribers. The support has been amazing. So thank you so much to everyone for that. I, I really, really appreciate it. And of course, at every level of support, um, thank you so much for that. I'm glad that people can sort of uh, still gain information from all the videos I've made, all the previous videos. Something really crazy I actually found out, and I kind of knew this already, but I was doing a bit more research, is that there's videos I've made from 10 months ago, even just random videos, like let's say my turtle guide, that are still getting like a thousand views a day. And so if there is any topic on Minecraft you want to learn more about, feel free to just search on my channel page for it, and it's likely I do have a video on it. The things I haven't covered, I'm going to cover in the future. We have another super chat, is from flow underscore secret. And it says, how do you have different portals for different locations? Every uh, time I set up more than two original portals, they either get mixed up or I spawn somewhere completely random. I do actually have a video on that, but I will try and also explain it uh, as simply as I can. So every single block in the nether translates to eight blocks in the overworld. If we had two portals in the overworld that were right next to each other, they would kind of appear on the same block in the nether. Uh, but there's also another sort of annoying functionality that's in the game where portals will link to the same portal instead of creating a new one if they're decently close. So let's say you have two portals that in the overworld seem to be really far away, let's say you know, 100 blocks away, 200 blocks away. In the nether, those things are really, really close because um, there's the eight, it's divided by eight, basically. And so because of that, if your portals aren't originally very far away, you are going to have issues with them connecting to the same portal. What you want to do is take the coordinates of that portal. So let's say it's 800, 800 uh, in the overworld. That would then be 100, 100 in the nether. And replace the portals at the correct mathematical positions. Relight them, go through them, and that should link them to the right portal. Uh, but if you want to learn more about that, I do have a video on portal linking, uh, and uh, maybe one of the moderators can put that in the chat. 
So anyway, as I keep looking through all my items here, which is not doing much, I found actually my worst habit in Minecraft is to just jump around like this and to look through chests if I'm like talking to someone. It's kind of funny how uh, something like that is just what maybe my brain tends to do when I'm uh, focusing on, on something else. But either way, we actually have nothing in our ender chest, which I do not recommend. There's a lot of things I do recommend doing that we have in this world right now, mostly because the world is not really set up yet. But I'm really excited to set up this world with everyone being here to turn it into something that's actually like a really late game overpowered world. And of course, farms are something in the future for that and all those different things. So we're going to probably actually cut a little bit more away from the mountain here. I'm going to probably cut it about here. Uh, where the mountain is and then we can kind of get more room for whatever we're doing in the future we'll just go till these pickaxes are broken at least the silk touch one uh, because then we can have more room in the future someone says what's my render distance well my render distance is 24 but i'm on optifine everyone's favorite uh, not really but i do have optifine on so we could technically well this has nothing to do with your question we could technically turn on a bit of a sneaky shader right here um, which will probably look eh, probably okay. Sometimes, see, problem with shaders, if it, oh, it's, okay, that's very bright. <laughs> shaders are um, an interesting thing. Uh, this is not my favorite shader at all, and I know there's much better shaders than this, so maybe sometime in the future I'll do a video on shaders. I don't know if anyone would be interested in that or not. The problem with a lot of videos I've found is that because my audience is a lot, okay, I'm going to turn this off, <laughs> because my audience is a lot of Bedrock people as well as Java players, I want to make sure that all my videos are kind of uh, applicable to both, so... Someone said, uh, can I in the future do a design on efficient breeder zombification trading hall that works in bedrock? Well, that has to do with kind of what I was talking about earlier. Again, sort of uh, having things that apply to both the audiences. Definitely expanding on subjects I just haven't covered at all in bedrock is something I want to do in the future. Uh, so I'm hoping that I will take a look at that. I actually have um, some friends that are really, really good at bedrock. In fact, um, I have this friend called Stoic Epoch and they do bedrock farm tutorials and they know a ton about technical bedrock so i uh, definitely might be interesting someday to make a video on maybe a bedrock farm or something maybe to involve some of their technical knowledge in that as of course most of my knowledge of minecraft is from uh, java edition although of course i also do play bedrock edition a little bit uh, and i also of course research all the things about bedrock edition um, overall if it wasn't for some graphical issues i kind of like bedrock better in some ways in some ways so before everyone has a uh, sort of big controversy over that uh, feel free actually in the chat right now to tell me if you play bedrock or java edition i'd be so interested to know um who is watching this video maybe you know uh exactly yeah like what version you play maybe it's on a switch you know of course that would still be uh bedrock but bedrock does have kind of some differences depending on what version it's on and the weirdest versions of Minecraft to me are honestly like the legacy versions. You know, the things like um, 360 edition or PS3 edition or like Wii U edition, all these things. And we have a spam of comments from Bedrock and Java. Feel free to keep spamming what version you play. And yeah, it's, you know, it's so interesting to me. Both versions, I found most people who play Bedrock play it because of uh, the system that they're on. You know, because most systems don't have Java. Um, but as well as that, there are some people I know that do decide to play that version just because they enjoy it more, and, you know, that's fine as well. Um, both versions definitely have their pros and cons. I think it's so funny when certain YouTubers will try and be maybe more controversial or, you know, just be like, Bedrock is terrible or Java is terrible. And it's, I think at the end of the day, you know, the boring but more truthful answer is that both versions have their strengths and weaknesses and that, you know, ideally most people are going to pick a version depending on what uh, system they play on. And if it is something like, let's say, Windows 10 edition, um, there are, of course, some benefits to it if you enjoy, like, all the DLC and things things for uh for that and all the technical differences but there is that we're gonna take a look over here and i think it's actually a great view over here we can kind of see the jungle and uh there's actually a, a jungle fire there so i think if that was within the simulation distance there's two things in minecraft there's simulation and render uh we were not able to control the simulation before but uh, now we can in, in bedrock it was possible for a lot longer uh, but if it was simulated i believe we'd be seeing that 
uh, jungle forest fire over there spread a bit more, which is kind of interesting. And we can cut this off a bit short there, and we can then get the rest of this, although our pickaxe is about to break. We have another super chat uh, from flow underscore secret. I believe they sent one before as well. It says, is Java PC only and Bedrock console? So Bedrock Edition is on uh, basically everything, uh, except for Mac. Uh, so you have to play Java if you want to play uh, Minecraft on a Mac, uh, as far as I know anyway, <laughs> I don't actually own a Mac. Um, and as well as that, um, Bedrock Edition is a bit different, um, it, it's coded a kind of, kind of better, like it, it's, it's, Java Edition is coded with JavaScript, or not, well not JavaScript, but it's coded with Java. And Bedrock Edition, I believe, is C++. So it means that they're just kind of completely different in terms of how they work, like with their coding. And also, of course, uh, Minecraft uh, Bedrock Edition kind of has its own engine as well. Like, I believe Minecraft Legends is actually running kind of on the Bedrock Edition engine. Um, I forget exactly how it works, to be honest. But um, when Minecraft Legends does eventually come out, it will run uh, kind of like that. And uh, but yeah, in terms of versions, though, Bedrock's on basically everything. Uh, and then also Java is on PC, but Bedrock is also on PC, uh, known as Windows 10 Edition, so there's that. And yeah, they just visually look a bit different, function a lot differently. I have a bunch of videos on the differences between Bedrock Edition and Java Edition, uh, so feel free to check those out if you want to learn more about that. We have 100 durability exactly left. Someone says, uh, you mean C++, uh, pronounced C sharp. Someone says, how did you drop all the stone into the chest like that? Great question. There's actually a lot of, um, you know, if my audience wasn't split between Bedrock and Java, a video I'd probably make is uh, key combos, you know, either for Bedrock or for Java. Unfortunately, those videos don't tend to um, appeal to a lot of people because, you know, uh, half the people are on Bedrock, half are on Java. Uh, but there are some, and I will show that in a second here, once I'm done picking up all this cobblestone that we're mining out. Um, it's really easy. There's a lot of really cool key uh, combos, so actually I believe um, like this, we can like switch a tool between our offhand and main hand just by pressing F on the keyboard. Um, or as well as that, you can press like your uh, number key, so we can go like one to switch that with the number one slot. Or like, let's say we want these firework rockets here. This is slot number nine. Just press nine on the keyboard while hovering over it. It's switched, just like that. So there's, there's tons of things like that. That's not the only thing, of course. There's a absolute ton, and that's how a lot of these really quick speedrunners and YouTubers and things are able to do what they're doing so quickly. Seems kind of almost, you know, a bit ridiculous how quickly they can do some things. And a lot of it is the effective use of the sort of key combos and things. So we'll over here get our effect again. We have to kind of go in and out of range, unfortunately, at this stage to gain that effect again we should be able to break this down pretty quickly um, i tend to recommend like kind of a sweeping motion of mining things when breaking something so we can go through here and get that and get a much better view too of the area around us um, this amazing mountain it is a it's a nice y level to have a base at i kind of like this better than being on the very top you'd think there'd be a better view on the top of the mountain but from here it really is better because we can kind of be surrounded by the mountains um which i would say tends to look really good so We'll go over here and uh yeah so we'll go over up to the top of the mountain here and then we'll put away our stuff i'll show you what i was doing basically you right click so you so right click of course splits a stack in half and then what you do is you just double click basically sorry you don't double click i'm stupid what you do is you press shift and you double click so shifting and double clicking, I see it's so ingrained, I don't really think of exactly how I'm doing it, but you press shift and you double click and that puts it in. So right click, shift, double click, um, that puts everything of one type into the chest. And you can also do it to take things out. So again, take even, even just one of the blocks here, take it in your hand, shift, double click. In fact, I believe it would even work like this. Yes, it does. So you just have to kind of select this and you have to have something else in your hand already and that will uh, take those things in and out really quickly. So there's kind of the, the trick to that. And uh, thank you to Sudden Death um, for being a member of the Ice Squad for three months. And they have the uh, comment of best YouTuber with those amazing heart emotes that we got. Um, so thank you so much for that. Now, as the sun sets, we'll, uh, we'll actually not sleep because we're going to fight some mobs. I, I love fighting mobs live on a stream. It's so fun. 
and uh, some people dislike it because it's kind of dangerous, but I think it's pretty fun. So we'll let, we'll let the mob spawn. We'll get our uh, chest plate on. We should have a shield. That would be much smarter <laughs> than what we're doing right now. But we'll see what we get. This area has been a while, around for a while, so the local difficulty should be high enough that we're going to get a decent amount of mobs. Um, and kind of they'll, you know... It'll work overall pretty well. You can see the lights on the mountain over there actually from what we were doing before. I should have night vision. I do have some, it's just not on me. So we'll not be out here for too long because I know it's pretty dark for people. Uh, unfortunately, even on the brightest setting, nighttime is still fairly dark. So someone says, do I like island survival? I actually really enjoy island survival. Um, it's a challenge I'll sometimes do uh, just for myself try and find a seed very hard actually to find an island survival seed in the newest versions of the game uh, back in 1.17 and before it was a lot easier you can totally tell i'm on optifine actually because those creepers are lighting up as i hit them it's, it's kind of an optifine feature they have like some different uh little light effects to make things uh seem cooler and um one of the reasons why I'm not actually critically attacking those creepers is just so I can get back in time because my uh, sword does not have knockback, but it does have looting. So three gunpowder is a terrible deal because we do have looting. Uh, we should also have like smite so we can instantly kill the uh, the skeleton there. And we'll try and get the creeper. Uh, that time it did drop two gunpowder. Uh, so we're just getting some gunpowder. Eventually we'll have a gunpowder farm, um, but we might have to wait a little bit for that. And uh, there we go. There's that creeper as well. Let's see what else we have. We'll get like one more horde of creepers. Um, I wonder what a group of creepers is called. I'm sure there is an official answer for that in the lore of the game. How like, you know, different groups of animals are called different things. Like I think a group of lions is called a pride of lions or something like this. Um, but it would be kind of interesting to know what the group of creepers is called. And uh, we'll let those mobs kind of uh, have a uh, sort of fight with each other there. Let's see if we can actually uh, jump into the bed here when that's too far away. It's always funny that message. I remember someone saying it's stupid that that message is even in the game because why do they not just not let you even interact until then? And which does honestly make sense. I don't know why you're able to interact with the bed at sort of a distance that you can't get into it at. But um, anyway, we'll go over here. We'll get in to this bed there, and we'll also uh, we'll kill like one or two more creepers. We only have seven gunpowder. Of course, we can multiply our number of gunpowder to find out the amount of rockets that we'll have. And so we can do that fairly easily. And I feel like my game is lagging. Could be Optifine. We'll find out. Anyway, we'll uh, we'll sleep here. And in the morning, we're going to continue on. Someone says a detonation of creepers. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, we could call that a blast of creepers. That would make sense. That would make sense. I like these suggestions. We should... Send them to Mojang for what they should rename a group of creepers, whatever they currently call it. Now, let's take a look here. I mean, something we should also think about during the build is if we should use all the stone for it. I know we'll need some of it to kind of flatten out the rest of the mountain, uh, but overall I'm not sure if we'll need all of it there. So, let's... Let's, I think let, let's do get some villagers here, even if we don't like use them immediately. Definitely getting a villager area set up. I just I can't see that being a bad thing. And then I can also cover something I haven't before on here, which is how to move villagers. So for moving villagers, um, we're gonna kind of go through all the phases of that, and it's always very interesting moving villagers. So yeah, we're gonna we are gonna do that in a second here. Once we've cleaned up the rest of the mobs, might even be a couple creepers around. We'll find out. We'll sacrifice a couple rockets to find out. Um, I don't see any. And of course, mobs do like instantly disappear if you're 120 blocks away, uh, if they're hostile. Uh, and so because that, most of these aren't going to survive, but there is one creeper, a single creeper, survived at the top of the mountain here. It thinks its goal in life is to uh, detonate me. Its actual goal is to give me gunpowder, and it has completed that goal. And we have a super chat, another one from Flow underscore secret, say, uh, thank you so much or the super chats, and it says, uh, random, but you find the ancient cities spooky. Uh, well, remember the first time on the first snapshot of 1.19, uh, well, I guess it wasn't wasn't 1.19, but, but no, it was actually yeah, on the first, well, one of the first snapshots, whatever the one was that introduced the, um, the warden itself and the ancient city, I remember I was just 
amazed by the audio design because it is so different to what Mojang has done before. You know, very, really good audio design. So it was kind of spooky. I think, of course, at this point, um, I don't. Um, if you want to know how uh, not spooky I find them, you can watch my uh, previous Survival Live livestream, actually, where I I uh, defeat a lot of ancient cities. And um, you can kind of take a look at, um, yeah, those streams and how I deal with it. We have another super chat. It's actually a super sticker um, from Evelyn uh, Boont, and it is a dancing pair. So nothing better in life than a dancing pair, and I thank you for, <laughs> for the uh, super sticker. All right, let's start making our pathway. So we need to kind of like, this is what you do to transport villagers a far distance. Definitely use the nether, number one. Uh, definitely. And so... We need to start by kind of assessing where we're going to go. I think moving the portals is the best idea. Um, I don't know how to fly from here to the other portal. I think I guess we'd go through like around maybe? No, that's wrong. To be careful, we don't have any feather falling. So if we do mess up, uh, we can get hurt really quickly. Actually, I think it was this way. Maybe. Maybe not. This this seems correct, actually. I see some light here. It could be from lava. It's not. Oh, there we go. We did, we did go the right way. Look at that. So we need a flint and steel. We'll go back to our main base, get the supplies we need. We need, of course, flint and steel. We need, um, we actually don't need obsidian. We'll just grab the current obsidian that's there. And, uh, hold on, the light goes through there. Oh, it goes through this tunnel, I see. Uh, yeah, like that. All right. And we also have another super chat for five euros from Schlapp. It says, thank you for your tutorials. They really helped me progress in Minecraft. And well, thank you so much for the super chat. And I'm glad that they were able to help so much. I think a lot of Minecraft players will know a lot about certain areas of the game. Maybe not a lot about all the areas of the game. So it's so happy to me that Minecraft players, whether they're new or really experienced, can still usually learn something from some of my videos. And then of course I can put my uh, stupidly large knowledge of the game to good use um, and teach it to other people as well. And we'll put that in here just because it looks good. Now, I think we need to, we need to get the flint and steel. That's important. We also should get the rest of this and we have five, <laughs> we actually have more iron than this. I don't know where it is, though. I think it's at the, uh, well, it's kind of at the portal base, but I don't think we used literally all of our iron, so we'll have to take a look at that in a second here. Uh, some more gunpowder in there, too, which is good for later. Um, and we oh, <laughs> don't want to burn down my house just yet. Uh, not just yet. Um, we should definitely get mending on those. And let's see if we do have any extra obsidian. It would be useful. We actually have a ton of flint and steels in here. I probably, probably should have checked that first, but, you know... It is what it is. And we have another super chat from Dirtbag, $50. Thank you so much. And it says, I'm going to have to finish watching the stream later. I'm going hiking. Catch y'all later. Hope everyone has a great weekend. Well, I hope that um, you have a great time hiking. And I hope that everyone who's watching the stream will enjoy what we're about to do, which is the perilous journey to bring the villagers from the village to our new base. Uh, it will be perilous because there'll be many gas trying to kill us, so we're going to have to be aware of that. Um, the, one of the biggest Minecraft tricks that I see people almost never do, and I find it so funny that people forget to do this, um, but people really do forget to do this, and that is to craft your full blocks into slabs. Not always, of course, uh, but to craft those full blocks into slabs whenever you need to kind of, you know, build a pathway, build something with them. Um, I find it so funny that people don't do that. And, you know, basically what um, I'm going to do is just craft this into a bunch of slabs because then we can use this to make our villager pathway even more efficient. Now, of course, we're transporting villagers. And as I said earlier, we are going to need some boats for that. So we're going to grab uh, some planks. Actually, another thing we could use as well as rails, not maybe um, in the way you think. And the reason why is that rails are going to make for us a great way of stopping villagers. Now, there's some of our iron, actually. Nice, we finally found that. Uh, we'll probably craft with this iron, uh, let's say, uh, we'll do eight here. So we're going to do uh, one stack of rails. The reason why is that mobs will not really walk over rails. Some will, but most won't. And so because of that, 
we can use rails as like something to kind of stop the villagers. It'll be uh, something that we can walk over, but they can't. Uh, so we'll just craft this uh, right over... I don't know if it, we have the recipe unlocked, actually. That's fine. We'll do the old-fashioned way, um, which is like that, kind of. And then we'll... Well, not really. We'll go like that. There we go. I always thought the recipe should kind of look more like this or like this, uh, but it doesn't. It's that. There we go. There's a stack of rails. Um, and yeah, we have... We have rails, so we are going to use these. Uh, we will probably bring a minecart too, honestly, just because you never know if we'll need it. We probably won't use it, um, but you never know. Sometimes it's just better to have these things, things to protect the villagers in case. These are great supplies to bring if you want to move around villagers. So we have this, we have the rails, we have the blocks. Uh, that might be it, actually. A bow would be good if we have that, so we can like stop gas if they're trying to shoot us. Uh, so we'll grab the bow, and we have a, another super chat from Maxon, uh, and it says they'll be heading out as well. Take care, chat, and I enjoy the rest of the stream, and have a nice weekend. Well, thank you, and hopefully you have a good rest of your weekend as well. All right, so we have this. I believe, I believe we have everything we need. There's that night vision I was talking about earlier. Um, I'll put away the silk touch pickaxe actually, so we don't break it by accident. That would um, not be ideal. And we do have over here an extra uh, Silk Touch pickaxe. Yeah, there we go. Alright, so we're going to start making our villager pathway now. So, let's take a look. Our portal is over here. And we need to move the portal. So, once we move the portal, we will then um, kind of see where it lands, ends up. Hopefully it ends up in a good place, not a bad place. Because sometimes these things will uh, really move far away. Uh, and again, if you're just joining the stream, uh, feel free to like the stream if you're enjoying it so far. Um, and we're basically about to get some villagers moved around. We are going to take these to our uh, mega base we're working on. And uh, yeah, again, feel free to like the video. Now, let's go over here. Let's get these villagers moved. Um, someone says, hey, I craft, do you lose saturation depending on what you do? Uh, well... So, saturation is kind of a hidden effect in Minecraft, kind of hidden, the way it works. And saturation uh, is affected um, by what you eat. So, you'll gain more saturation, and then you'll lose saturation. Uh, so, it is affected by what you do in the sense of the foods you eat, for sure. I um, mean, it is affected in other ways as well. But the biggest thing about managing saturation effectively is you want to make sure to eat... Uh, high saturation foods in Minecraft and the highest saturated foods um, are like golden carrots that's a really good one another one you can do is chorus fruit to max out your saturation uh, or you can also use um, the saturation suspicious stew that's one of the best ones and saturation affects how quickly you regenerate your health uh, so of course that would be something that would do that and someone says, how big of a storage system do you suggest? They're currently building theirs and unsure if it's big enough. Uh, it depends completely on how much you play on your world. You know, if you um, don't play Minecraft that much or when you're playing it, you don't really uh, do a lot in it. You may not necessarily need more than just like, um, you know, a couple double chests. But obviously, if you're a really active player of Minecraft, uh, then a storage system should be a really big build. You know, if you're making like a automatic storage system, uh, then I would definitely suggest creating something really large. I mean, ideally a, a set of chests for each item. Um, but of course, at that point too, it's kind of up to you whether or not you want to honestly have a chest for like, let's say, you know, um, stripped, uh, you know, warped hyphae wood or something like that. So obviously, you know, uh, these things do tend to end up uh, getting a little bit complicated over time. Here's an unemployed villager, actually. In fact, let's let's capture it in a boat. Uh, if it hopefully stays in the corner there, let's get our villager uh, captured. The problem is sometimes these things will kind of get stuck in the corner, so you can't really get them out. Yeah, like this. Like we can't really move this villager, so we're gonna have to kind of wait. If we put this boat here, it should get in it no matter what, so that should be okay. Uh, we'll put another one down just like here, uh, just in case. Now this villager, untraded with cleric, which is fine, uh, we just need two unemployed villagers. They can actually be employed too, it just is kind of better if they're not. Um, so we would want to... Uh, actually, is that unemployed? No. So the we've traded with these a bit, 
The masons are like a really good emerald villager. You know, there's kind of two types of villager trades. In fact, there's definitely two types, the buying type and the selling type. There's a cat on the roof there, that's funny. Uh, and of course, things like the masons um, are a selling type where you would sell to them a lot of different items. Or whereas like a librarian, more so buying, you'd buy a bunch of things from them. Uh, but it does depend, because like with the librarian, you could sell paper to them if you wanted, which is not a bad trade at all. But anyway, let's move that portal. So we do have the flint and steel. I guess the best location would be kind of in the middle here. We don't really want villagers to go into the portal, so uh, we'll, we'll get it... I guess maybe here is fine. Next to the water, we, we don't really want to have a lot of these path blocks next to it, because moving boats over path blocks is incredibly annoying. Um, so yeah, we'll probably put that like... Uh, I guess we could put it over here by the water, I keep not sure. Uh, but yeah, we'll put it like there. We technically do not have to use all this obsidian either, uh, but we did have a full portal, uh, so we may as well make another full portal. So we'll put that across there. And technically, it looks like a full portal, actually. Wait, this block down here isn't filled. Of course, you don't need to do that, but we may as well. And we'll light that, go through it. Um, well, actually, uh, something really important is to make sure that you don't get your villagers kind of uh, going into there. So in fact, we'll make a bit of a better system. We'll get some fence gates here. We did have a crafting table over there. Uh, something I always think is funny is to like convert part of a villager house into a crafting table. And then with that, we can get some sticks. And then with the sticks, we can get some, uh, I guess, just fence gates. So we need four fence gates. There we go. We'll go like that. And we'll go, we'll just uh, yeah, block up that other side, I think, is fine. Uh, just like that. So we now have a way out and into the portal that is uh, villager safe, I guess. So there's that. Let's hope this portal connects up. I'm thinking it'll connect up to the other portal. It may be random. It was, well, not really random, but it was not next to the other portal. So... There's that, and the light bulb in my room is flashing on and off. I hope it is the light bulb's about to break and not the power. So if my stream does suddenly end, I guess there was a power outage. I don't know what to tell you. But anyway, all right. So this is where we ended up. Um, we're getting shot, of course, which is uh, insulting. But anyway, we'll go over to where we have to go correctly. This is the portal. Uh, we'll, we'll collect these bones, why not? Again, never... There's never a bad time to collect bones in Minecraft. That's what I say. And it's always worth it to sort of uh, grab those. Uh, although, maybe deal with the uh, <laughs> skeletons first. Let's kill it with the shield. So, to get a skeleton without getting shot, hold up a shield, get closer. Again, get very close. Trick with the skeleton is to be close to it. And just to hold up the shield whenever it hits. So, we're going to go over here and get all of this mined out. We have a super chat from I'm Hungry, and it's for IDR20,000. I have zero idea uh, what currency that is, but thank you. And it says, what's your microphone? Great question. I think I answered this before, uh, but I'll answer it again. And it is a... Uh, uh, <laughs> I, I know this, it is a Shure SM70 microphone. It is like the sort of uh, stereotypical YouTuber microphone, I guess. I actually probably like the blue microphones, the stereotypical, but anyway, it's a really good one. It's connected up to a cloud lifter, then to a um, M Audio Air amp. So it basically um, is like an all, well, it's, it's kind of a three part system. Um, yeah, I found it works really well. It's more or less like kind of the industry recommended, you know, microphone. Um, I got it quite a while ago. I used to have a different microphone, a USB one. Before that, I had a um, Audio-Technica microphone. None of those were bad, um, but I just wanted to kind of have the best audio quality possible. Since I think a lot of people kind of watch me for uh, the voice. And so because of that, I want to make sure that my voice in my videos is... Uh, good quality. So that's my microphone setup if you were wondering, which of course you were. Alright, we need to find out where this portal is. We need to get our way out of here. I think the way back is over here. Let's mark down the coordinates F3, F2. That's a trick. Let's go over here. Let's take a look. And uh, we have... Uh, this might be... It. Okay, there's that pathway. In fact, okay, here we go. So this... This... Oh, we fell down. This portal right here, I believe it leads to our base. If it doesn't, we'll, we'll take a look, but I think it does. So this should actually be a really good direct route. Um, it's funny because we're not that far away. Okay, it does connect. That's good. So we'll um, we'll go over here. 
Someone says, was I born in Michigan? Absolutely not. I am Canadian, um, was born in Canada, and uh, I, I'd never even been to Michigan or know someone from Michigan. Maybe maybe it's the Canadian accent? I'm, I'm not sure. Um, but I wasn't in East, like, I'm not uh, around Michigan either. I'm not, like, in, I don't know, <laughs> whatever's across from Michigan, I, I couldn't tell you, but, um, yeah. So, no, I'm not from Michigan at all. So, I think it's just this way. This should be the way. We have another super chat. Um, and thank you for the super chat for five. I think that's Australian dollars. You used to have the big A there. Uh, cool. So thank you so much for that. I appreciate the super chat. Yeah, so it is a straight shot. So I guess we could just kind of make our pathway. Um, <laughs> we should get some fire resistance is the real answer to this conundrum. Because um, if we fall in the lava, that's not ideal. I guess we could probably survive... Uh, I don't know if we want to make that risk. Funny right there, actually, the arrow of the skeleton bounced off our shield, and it hit the skeleton. I always find it funny when that happens. Um, we'll put that there. Okay, we're going to bridge across. This is going to be really weird, because we have swift sneak. <laughs> so look how quick this is. It's so funny. The um, the swift sneak bridging, it looks kind of uh, sped up. And someone says IDR is Indonesian uh, rupiah. Okay, interesting. And someone says, I'm a uh, following, uh, following, I am a fellow Canadian. Uh, I am a Canadian over here. Someone says, do you think another hub is important? Uh, it definitely is. Um, just again, you know what a lot of players don't sort of um, get in Minecraft is that, um, you know, everything in the game kind of takes time. So of course for us, like another hub wouldn't be happening for a while, but it is important. I have a video on how to make it. Um, and if you want to know how to make another hub, uh, check out that video. You can just look up iCraftMC Nether Hub, and we do that. This one says, I'm the dictionary of Minecraft. Probably, <laughs> probably I am. Um, now, Soul Speed, or it's not Soul Speed, but Soul Sand has kind of this strange functionality where, like, you're kind of lower on it. We'll mess up, a, uh, we'll kind of mess up our boat idea. So, from right here, how close are we? Probably pretty far. Uh, kind of. There's a... There's a gas. There we go. <laughs> but anyway, um, it's right over here. So we need to get higher up. I don't know how we're really going to... I, mean, I guess we'll use a minecart to do that, unfortunately. Um, we could... Yeah, we can't... I mean, we can get a boat to go vertical. It's not very easy. It's not worth it at all. Um, but we're going to we're gonna get the rest of the pathway here done anyway. Um, we could move the portal itself, but that's probably not a good idea. It does not tend to work out very well. Uh, we are out of inventory room. Let's make a chest. Actually, we'll just go on the other side here. We have all of our chests there. Uh, let's put them that. Uh, let's put them there. And uh, someone says, why don't I play hardcore mode? Well, because um, I wouldn't want to die on stream, to be honest. I mean, I think I could survive it. But the thing is, is that hardcore mode, and I've played hardcore mode worlds before. You know, I've done pretty well on them. The thing is, is that uh, to do hardcore, um, the initial stages of it, you have to kind of be really focused on the game about not dying, and you're also playing in a way that's different than what the normal player does. You know, you have to be more careful. I mean, the average player isn't going around with totems of undying all the time. Um, not that that's bad, but, you know, of course, it's kind of being hyper-cautious, uh, which is important on hardcore, don't get me wrong. Um, uh, but I think, you know, for me at this point, uh, I want to make sure to kind of have this series be something where people can watch it and they can legitimately learn about how to play the game, different ways of kind of uh, getting better at it. Uh, so that's one of the reasons why I'm not playing in hardcore. It's just that at this point, I can kind of um, be more uh, playing as the average player would be. But I'm not against a hardcore series long term. In fact, you know, maybe one day in the future, you'll see like 100 days of hardcore series from me. I definitely can play hardcore. I just decided not to in this world. Someone says, what about using rails and minecarts? We are going to use them somewhat. Um, as I was kind of discussing slightly earlier, we actually do have an issue of the uh, area that we need to get the villager to to be higher up in the nether. It's a higher up Y level. Because of that Y level difference, we are going to need some rails. So we're actually going to craft some powered rails here, uh, which of course use gold. And we do have gold, so uh, perfect quite a bit of it. And so we're going to grab that gold. Most of it, I think, is from the uh, end. So we'll turn that into the ingots. We'll get our gold. And we're going to go through here. Someone says, uh, 
At iCraftMC, just wanted to say I absolutely love your content. I find it hard to find adult Minecraft content, and overall, I really appreciate you making the content that you make. Well, thank you so much. I definitely try and make my content appeal to everyone. Um, I don't necessarily think of my content as adult Minecraft content, but, you know, adult in the sense of uh, not being sort of um, appealing only to children. So I'm glad that uh, you enjoy uh, my content. And let's take a look at... Let's get some sticks. I believe, anyway, there we go. <laughs> Bit of a sticky situation. And of course we have our rails. There they are. Uh, six gold. And we have the stick and the redstone dust. So we'll make those. 24 that should be enough. Yeah, we are going pretty high uphill, but I think that'll be fine. Put the gold away. Anything that's still sorted, we may as well keep sorted. And hey, we have a message um, from a Jewel of Beauty member for two months, which means they get the gold uh, eye on their little um, badge. And it says, hi, all great uh, stream. Um, welcome back. I mend your boots. <laughs> yeah, I should mend my boots. You're right. I need to add mending. I also need to add feather falling. Very important. We, we kind of have access to the feather or to the mending. We do actually have access to it. We do not have access to the feather falling. So we need to um, get that. And, you know, we could technically combine it with another pair of boots, add diamonds to it. Yeah, 121. So we're not doing too bad, but I'll definitely keep that in mind. Now... I think we should have everything we need. We actually should get some more solid blocks because they're going to work a little bit better on the slope uh, than these slabs. Not always um, best idea to just use uh, slabs, but as I was saying earlier, slabs definitely uh, can be really great. So we're going to go over here, go back to our portal, and then also take a look at those. And sort of to switch the conversation off of... Uh, what I'm doing in the game right now and on to Minecraft's future. You know, I, I love talking about these sort of more abstract things on stream because I feel like people, um, you know, I'm assuming the average viewer right now is on their phone and they're playing Minecraft probably on a different system. So I'm, I'm going to tell you if you're the average viewer. If you're the average viewer, you're between 18 and 30 years old. You're male. You're playing on a, this is just what YouTube tells me, by the way. You're playing on a uh, computer, but you watch my videos on your phone, and your phone is an Android. <laughs> so if that that should be describing about 30 to 50 percent of my viewers right now, which is really funny. I don't know if it actually is, but according to YouTube, it is. So we'll see how accurate that is. Um, what I love is the fact that that's not actually true for a lot of my audience. Like I was saying, that's maybe 30 percent, which is still a lot, uh, but it's definitely not true for all of them. And uh, someone says, someone says spot on. Someone says it's it's not. Uh, it's, it's kind of a funny thing to think about, though, how averages and all that. I, th I think something I find funny, too, is that I did do a poll on my channel once asking people, like, you know, if they watch my content, we you know what age they were, um, and it was a lot different than the results that YouTube gave me, so I'm not sure if that means that people were lying, or if it means that YouTube, um, sort of, uh, like, if there are different audiences from the posts and from the videos, probably a mix of both, honestly. Um, someone says it's scary. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Anyway, so we're going to go this way and we're almost to the uh, place we need to kind of elevate. Um, cause for now, this is like our strange pathway. I love this song. It's actually a nether song, which is perfect. I love the, uh, the newer nether songs. Very nice. I never really think of nether updates being new anymore. I used to, it's, it's gotten to be too long too long but now now it seems like it's just kind of a part of the game i guess still a nice song though i always wish that like things like soul soil wouldn't be so useless you know they basically have like one use which is making basalt generators um and that's about it and you know that's not a bad use but it's like soil making a generator like that doesn't make a lot of sense and also you know there's the fact that things like the um I mean, I guess little nether sprouts and things can grow in the soul soil, but the nether wart can't. The nether wart has to grow in the soul sand, not in the soul soil. Well, why would a plant not grow in soil? Like, if there's an, if there's two types of items, and one of them's soil and one of them isn't, wouldn't you think that the plant would grow in the soil? So it's, it's kind of a strange, like, discrepancy or whatever in Minecraft that it is like that. Someone says they love the sound of breaking bone blocks. I do as well, to be honest. It is a very satisfying sound of breaking bone blocks and uh 
there's so many bone blocks around here, honestly. If we needed some bone blocks, we have bone blocks. Someone says, why not netherite armor and tools? It's gonna happen. It's gonna happen soon. Uh, eventually, anyway. Let's look over here. Um, alright, so we have to go up there, unfortunately. We'll do another flyby, kind of see how far we've gotten. I think we're really close, so take a look. We'll eat some food. A <laughs> little problem is if you're hungry and you're flying, you'll kind of switch to eating. Uh, does not usually end up well. Okay, we've gone maybe too far, actually, which is kind of good. Um, is it up here? Yes, maybe. Let's see. Oh, it's through here. Okay. We have to get up to here. If we look down at the pathway... There we go. Okay, that makes sense. That's not ideal, but uh, it's good enough. We'll go over here. Uh, we kind of went too far, but that's okay. Oh, let's get this skeleton before it gets us. It's always kind of fun doing a critical attack when you're flying. Um, definitely works well. It's like the first strike being quite strong. And uh, we've run out of rockets. We've actually used a lot already. Let's make our little pathway up here. And yeah, we'll take a look at that. Oh. <laughs> it sounded like something was sneaking up on me, which nothing actually sneaks up on you in this biome, but like, the Enderman was trying. It's trying its best. So we'll go vertical. I wish I have to... It's so annoying how rails can't go vertically and up at the same time. Um, little spoiler alert, I should have a video on rails coming out at some point soon. So there's your little, um, because you watch the live streams, you get a sneak peek. Look at that, rail guide coming soon. I, am, I just did discuss in that rail guide sort of the annoyances of certain rail configurations. Overall, it's good. Definitely some annoyances, so... Uh, but you'll find out more about that in the actual video. And I've been asked to make a rail guide for like a year. Uh, <laughs> almost jumped off the edge there. Uh, finally is happening, and it's, it's a decent guide. I definitely go over all the basics. Um, tons about activator rails that I don't think most people know. Activator rails are very bizarre, and uh, they, they're great, but they just are strange the way they work. So um, you can like disable hopper minecarts and things like that, you know, most people probably don't know about. So yeah. We're gonna make our little pathway though. Uh, we're almost there. It's, we're getting there. I guess if nothing else we have like a pathway we can walk on um, that takes us between the village and our base. Uh, definitely these sort of pathways end up... <laughs> I'm glad I have a lighter on. This is called why you do not walk backwards without crouching in the nether. It's sort of three things I did wrong at once. Um, I mean I have a lighter so it doesn't really matter but you know. Walking backwards without crouching in the nether always a great idea. So <laughs> we'll go over here and I, I've definitely died that way before unfortunately. Uh, here's a really funny story actually. It's the first time I ever died in Minecraft and it's because I thought you could run backwards. So I had only, ever, this is a long time ago, I, I'd only ever watched Minecraft videos. I hadn't uh, played the game at this point point. and I decided I wanted to make a portal uh, with buckets because I'd never uh, I didn't. I couldn't find diamonds basically because you know I was a noob. I, this is a, again a very long time ago, and basically, actually we'll go this way. Uh, basically, what happened was I placed down lava because I had it in my hot bar, and I was uh, kind of about to die. You know, it was going towards me, but it's pretty slow because we're in the overworld. Uh, lava actually goes faster in the Nether, um, and so I thought I could just sprint backwards. I just pressing shift and backwards, and it's like, why aren't I? Why aren't I? Why aren't I sprinting backwards? And then I got burned and died. But if I had to just turned around and ran, it'd be fine. It's just kind of funny how like I, you know, I'd never seen someone not sprint backwards in Minecraft, so I didn't know why people weren't. And so I just thought, oh, I guess you can just sprint backwards. So it's just kind of funny how. Um, like not knowing one thing about the controls just because no one had ever talked about like not being able to sprint backwards uh, made it so that I died that one time uh, from lava, which is kind of funny. Uh, but anyway, all right, I think this is our pathway basically done. Let's get that rail track. Oh, we need some levers, which we can make actually. We have all the ingredients, isn't that convenient? And um, uh, we'll start down here. So the rails will go, I guess we'll have to make a little station because we'll be like kind of riskily boating around here. So the station will start like... I hear a ghast. The station will start like here. And we'll make like a little loop there. And we'll start by just placing standard rails and we'll put in the powered rails. I tend to suggest that kind of um, putting in the power a little later. It tends to work the best. Uh, but it's of course whatever you want. Someone says this fire protection really help against lava. Absolutely. Absolutely it does. Um, 
<laughs> It'd be funny if it didn't. Uh, you know, it definitely does, and uh, even like the fire protection value that it's inherent to netherite, also very important, and it also helps you uh, a lot. So here's a little, in fact, look at this. Why do we have to not have fun? We can have fun. Let's let's have a let's have a ride. Hopefully this won't put us directly into lava. It won't. Here we go. Here we go. Woo! There we go. <laughs> Down our like amazingly dangerous nether uh, nether um. Oh, there's a ghast. <laughs> but anyway, we'll take a look at the ghast actually. And get rid of that. Where's the ghast? Oh, there it is. We'll get that. It's always so fun killing ghast. I enjoy it quite a bit. And of course we get the gas tiers, which earlier I was talking about those, because gas tiers are used for end crystals, and end crystals are used for a lot of things, especially if you like end crystal PvP. You know, I made a video on end crystal PvP a long time ago, like no one watched it, I don't, I don't know why, but I think it's a great video. Um, that skeleton too. Unfortunately, there is a lot of skeletons that seem to want to spawn in this biome. Which of course makes sense, because that is naturally where they spawn the most in the nether. That's always so interesting. Now we'll go over here. Alright. Uh, let's make our little loop. So to kind of catch the villager, we have to make like a little area to convert it from boat to minecart, unfortunately. Um, not too hard, but just a pain. Uh, we'll go like this. So this will go like a loop. And we'll have to kind of have an edge on it. Uh, so we'll go like that. And then like this. Uh, this is a good little trick if you're trying to collect villagers. Just get a little station to capture them, just like this. So we'll, like, we'd row the boat in here, and then we'll kind of get it over. Push the chest into it, or the minecart into it. We can kind of connect it up to the rail line in a second. So, let's get those powered rails in there. Let's get those uh, levers, and we'll kind of keep going. So we'll start with like a big power boost. Always good. Start with a big speed boost. Get it going. And then once it's at that speed boost, just put in some rails to kind of be like maintenance, keep that speed going. So like we'll put like, you know, three rails here. That should be fine. Probably not even needing this many. And we'll kind of do the same thing um, up on this little flat area here. You know, get it up on the edge there. Uh, turn that on, turn that on. I guess we'll need a, another lever. Levers are really great because unlike the torches, you don't really need to kind of place them on something they can go on the side of a block so it works pretty well and then just up here we'll we'll skip like a couple blocks and like up here uh, we kind of mined the wrong block there but it worked out I uh, will do one last speed boost uh, just over there and then we will take these blocks and we'll put those uh, here and we have that all right so there is this configuration and that should be good uh, we will make another little sort of conversion thing where we can like convert the villager from the one uh, minecart to the boat. Uh, but that should be fine. We just want to make sure not to get onto the soul sand, not to like get the villager out of where it should be. And so we'll just put that into a little uh, loop. Again, making these kind of loops tend to be pretty easy. Uh, just something like that works fine. And we'll do a little test here, a little test drive. Start slow, but go this way. Sim says they wish they had money to donate, they spend it all on mine coins. <laughs> well, you know, I, my, mine coins are... Uh, I, I know someone actually spent like, I think a 500, maybe a thousand dollars on mine coins. Uh, they definitely enjoy the marketplace a lot, and I'm sure Mojang's very glad of that. Um, <laughs> there's lots of cool things on the marketplace though, for sure. Alright, I think... This area is done, so it's time to move the first villager, which is kind of exciting. We'll, we'll take a little look at our whole pathway here. May have to revise some points of it. Ah, uh, it doesn't look like it. Or I know it does, because right here we actually have to mine these. There's like lava right there, that is so close. <laughs> not the safest thing, not the safest for sure. And also, when villagers go through portals, um, they can't really do that in boats. So we have to kind of make like a stupid system here. Well, it's a smart system, but it's annoying. Uh... Put like two here and then we'll uh, go like this so you can kind of walk one way not really any other way this will work um that's good enough there we go and then yeah we'll try out their system try out the first villager here someone says what is my project uh oh it is that portal went in the wrong area and it is nighttime great uh neither of those things are good and i don't even know where we are there's the village let's sleep before every villager dies because that's you know probably not a good thing and, uh, 
There we go. The project, though, is getting villagers to where our new base will be. Someone says they won't lie. They spent $50 on mining coins. <laughs> yeah, I don't doubt it. I, I know a lot of people really like skins inside of games. Of course, in, you know, Java and actually in Windows 10 as well, you can get custom uh, skins, but you can't get, like, the cosmetics or anything. A little earlier here, we had a villager we tried trapping. Let's see if that worked. It should have, um, but it might not have. So it did. There we go. Perfect. So we'll just move this. Uh, this will be kind of an annoying ride. Um, we're going to need to start by making this kind of able to be moved on. The problem is, what will happen? I'll show you. A boat will get stuck like this. So now we can't actually move it because of this teeny little one pixel difference. The boat cannot move up. The boat cannot move up a one pixel difference. You heard that right. And so because of that, unfortunately, we have to kind of make this ugly temporary, of course, cobblestone pathway. So we can uh, row the villager across the pathway and not get it stuck on those path blocks. So we'll take that to like here. This one villager is looking like it wants to volunteer, but it's already been traded with, so we won't bother. Someone says they are trying to find shells to make a conduit while watching the video. Uh, so that's always something I enjoy doing is, is trying to make a conduit. Conduits are such a kind of overlooked... Oh, goodness. <laughs> Conduits are such an overlooked item in the game. And um, as I said, I just like, you know, suffocate this villager casually. <laughs> but anyway, it's funny, villagers always look to the same direction when they are... When they're in a boat, I don't know why they always do, though. You can kind of see that. It's like they'll always stare to the right. So, I don't know. Well, not always. Well, usually. Usually. There you go. Yeah, it's still kind of staring to the right. I don't know why. We'll go over here. This is like the perfect song for annoying villager transportation, let's be honest. So, move, open this. There we go. Put it in there. Get out. We now have to break. Well, I have to kind of go like this. Turn on hitboxes, F3 plus B. Break the boat. Break the boat. Break it. Come on. There we go. Okay, now we're both through. And we'll take a look at the other side. And there's a villager. And we'll put the boat down. Please get in the boat, Mr. Villager. There we go. Come on, don't go through the portal. There we go. Perfect. And now we just have to break these two blocks here. This is villager number one. We're going to be smart here. We're going to start by getting rid of any dangers. We're just going to walk along this path, see if anything notices us. Does a skeleton notice? No. So I think we're okay. We want to make sure that we don't run into anything, because their arrows can actually break the boat, and sometimes that could even make the villager fall into lava. So, ooh. <laughs> this is like the stupidest thing. <laughs> I think like 99% of people would just make like a rail here, but I'm like too cheap with my iron, so we're going to take a boat. Uh, boat's generally better if we're, uh, <laughs> this is so funny. <laughs> okay. Let's go. Okay. Yeah, that is exactly what I want to, okay. Okay, well the vill- Oh, well that was convenient, I'll say that much. Anyway, <laughs> we're going to try and heal that villager in a second. Um... This is, this is so funny. But yeah, um, that is exactly what I was worried would happen, though, is the uh, skeleton would shoot the villager. So, you know, it did happen. Um, we'll keep going through here. Um, ideally, you would put rails down here if you're trying to go for a bit more of a practical method. Um, but if you don't have an iron farm, I mean, this isn't always the worst idea if you have good aim. There's another skeleton there. It'll, again, probably kill our villager if we're not careful. We don't really want that to happen. I mean, to be honest, villagers are kind of annoying, so, you know, part of me wants that to happen, but most of me doesn't, so we'll bring it over here. We'll get that skeleton first uh, to protect our villager. Should probably use a shield, but I'm not going to, so we'll get that, and I don't see any other skeletons in range. We'll get that, and uh, we're going to keep going through the nether uh, with our villager. Someone says gas would be swarming if I was on bedrock. There are definitely more ghasts in Bedrock than in Java. I found that out a little bit um, ago. I was playing with a friend in Bedrock. We were in the Nether. So many ghasts. There are definitely ghasts that could be here, though. And I sometimes will have times in Java, too. I'll have, like, three ghasts in the Nether. So, you know, we could have that happen. For sure, that skeleton down there is bothering me. And, um... 
yeah, but I guess we'll just see if we're lucky. You know, I am, I am I'd say like maybe 30% chance the villager doesn't make it out of this. So, you know, we'll see what happens. If that skeleton starts noticing me, which it is. Yep, there we go. We are going to get it. So there we go. And we do have an issue with that anymore. And we'll go up here and we'll get that villager. We're like halfway there, kind of. <laughs> We're, we're to the scary part, kind of scary part, which is converting the villager from being in the boat to being in the minecart. So to do this, um, we have to go into the center of this because it won't cross the rails, as I was saying earlier. Then we'll put down this minecart. You have to be really careful because the weird thing is, is that we should put a torch. Actually, do we have a torch? We don't. The weird thing is, is that uh, sometimes what will happen, there we go is the, the villagers will actually cross the rails, but it's if they're kind of pushed onto it, um, they will then be able to move over them. Uh, but another thing that's annoying is sometimes boats and minecarts will merge. I've totally seen this happen. It's super annoying. And I had some, it's kind of a glitch, and I've had some villagers die from it before, but um, that is something to be aware of as well. Let's let that villager go. Watch what happens. Up it goes. We'll follow it, because uh, why not? We haven't actually tried this rail line yet. There we go. And we should get both got stuck in that loop. We did. There is a skeleton. Let's run over and kill that skeleton. Oh no, it, it, uh, okay. Anyway, <laughs> we'll go over here. We, uh, decided it didn't want to fight me anymore in an interesting way. Um, there is, there is a ghast. There we go. Wasn't even looking at me and it shot at me. That doesn't seem fair. Doesn't seem fair at all. So we'll go over here. Uh, where did that fireball go? I don't know. But what I do know is that we have a boat. We're going to place the boat down. Uh, we are going to hope... Oh, this was not a good idea, was it? No, it really wasn't. Okay. We're going to have to uh, change our approach here for a, just for a minute, you know? Um, start by surrounding this villager. Kind of surrounding it, because we can't really fully surround it. And then uh, we will then go over here, block it like that, block it like that. Now the villager is in a kind of safer position and um yeah we'll see what happens we will get this Oop, there we go oh don't go in that corner let's look over here i actually didn't realize how similar the uh villager clothing was to well i guess it's not really it looked a little similar to the color of the soul sand and the lighting but the lighting is weird right now I wonder if, like, we are supposed to assume that this is, like, leather the villagers are wearing, you know? Because, of course, like, I guess it is, but, like, leather tunics don't look like that for us. So maybe it's not. It's kind of a funny thing. Like, it's, I think it's supposed to look like maybe cloth or something, but... Yeah, I guess it wouldn't be leather. Yeah, or it would look like the leather tunics. There's actually another place I haven't set up right because I didn't remember about the villagers not going through portals with boats. Of course, I know it, but I wasn't thinking of it as I was setting up an area. There's definitely a gas down there we have to be careful of. And uh, we'll put this here. Full surround. Block off this edge. We should be good. There, see, there's there's our swarm of ghasts. Uh, a, swarms of ghasts available on both Bedrock and Java. Exploded on us. I'm um, going to burn. Alright, there we go. So anyway, we'll go over here. And we will get the rest of this set up. And we'll just surround this in soul soil because why not um and then the villager can peacefully decide oh, that was close but peacefully decide to uh, go through the portal let's try and hit that back i'm definitely lagging right now which is making it annoyingly difficult to hit these villagers anyway we'll get this gas too here's our swarm of gas though we are honestly just lucky it didn't get us at the other area so there's that and we now have eight gas tiers which means we could respawn the ender dragon twice um which i don't know if we'd want to do that but we could i was so close to killing our villager it's kind of crazy now uh we should actually prepare the other end of this first and we should get ourselves a um area to capture that villager again so in fact we'll use the rails because why not we'll just surround this in rails probably don't have enough rails in fact we definitely don't and uh we'll just go around here but oh we're actually not that far away there we go. And then we'll just kind of uh, throw a boat down, try and get the villager in the boat, and we'll go this way. Someone says, uh, would you recommend anything to take to the end so you're not getting constantly wrecked by Enderman? Um, well, obviously there is the kind of annoying but technically very functional answer of 
curved pumpkins. Curved pumpkins, you can wear them on your head. If you have them on your head, Endermen will not get mad at you. It just most players are driven insane, me included, by having a curved pumpkin on your head because it actually changes your uh, view. You can kind of press F1 and, and live with it, but it's still um, an annoying thing. So that is something you can do if you want, um, is to wear a curved pumpkin. Then you can look at the Endermen, they won't hurt you. Another thing too is water. Water is really good for kind of placing it down, letting the Endermen get away from you. Uh, they won't get mad if they get in water. Um, they will teleport away, but they will not gain anger towards you, which means you're okay. And uh, funny enough, actually, you can shoot at Endermen with a bow and arrow, and they will not make them mad at you. As long as you don't look them in the eye, uh, they are not made mad by getting shot at with a bow and arrow. All they're made mad at is if you look at them in the eye or if you hit them. And so because of that, you can force them to teleport by basically just, like, if they're in their way, just hit them with a couple arrows and you're good. <laughs> so let's get the villager in there. There is a villager in the boat. We'll just row it over here for now, but hey, that's one villager down. Something really important to remember, because I've made this mistake myself, I'm sure many people have. It's not to surround this, but you want to surround this. And if you don't surround it, uh, you're going to have an issue. So obviously we're going to have to kind of back this up carefully so we don't kill our villager like we did earlier. We kind of hurt it a little bit. Um, we're going to surround this in cobblestone. We should get a torch. We'll see if we have one. Um, and then we'll grab that torch and we will put it in there to protect it from zombies because we do not want to come back to no villager. Uh, you'd think we come back to a zombified villager? No, unfortunately we would not. Um, because what will happen is a villager will zombify and if we've never traded with it before, and this one we haven't, then it's just regarded as being unimportant. And so because it's regarded as being unimportant, then it can despawn. Now, obviously, it is in a boat, so it kind of changes that. Um, but still, it's always good to be aware of those kinds of things, uh, because they definitely can happen, and it can definitely mean uh, no uh, villager after all the effort. So we have that. We need a second villager. We do need a couple more supplies, kind of. Um, we do also have those uh, bows. The only problem is I don't think we actually have another villager designated, but that was one successful uh, villager transportation, which is good. So, you know, we got that anyway. And, um, yeah, I think from there we can get the second villager. After that point, we'll see what we do in terms of everything else. Um, but definitely we can uh, take a look at getting the second villager. Someone says, uh, you can dupe any item in the game that way. I'm not sure what way you're talking about. Uh, we're going to break these blocks. Oh, there's a gust. Oh, we're going to destroy those blocks anyway, so it's kind of convenient, wasn't it? Um, we will <laughs> we'll fly to this gust, wherever it is. There it is. Er, no, where is it? There it is. And it didn't even see us. It did see us at first, didn't see us there. And we actually even saved the uh, the gas tears, which is nice, and the gunpowder. Perfect, because we kind of need both. We don't really need the gas tears, but we need the gunpowder, and why not keep the gas tears? So, now uh, we'll finish that. And we'll take a look down here. I guess just this way is back to our original area. Now if we want to transport a ton of villagers, we could. But once we have two, we'll make a breeder. We'll go from there. We should be fine. Someone says they are new to Minecraft. Do I have any tips? Sure, absolutely. So I think the first tip would be to try and collect as many resources as you can wherever you go. It sounds like a simple thing, but you know, something that I've seen a lot of people have an issue with is they'll start going mining and they'll bring like five pieces of coal. And so they won't be able to smelt their ores, or they will not be able to put any more torches up. They're going to have to stop their mining session early. No one wants that. And so a good trick would be, like, when you're just first collecting things, make sure to get, like, a really nice supply of every single item you're going for. Um, that's a good little trick. Another good thing is to craft a shield. A lot of players don't use shield. A shield is made with uh, wooden planks and an iron ingot. Uh, in the configuration which uses six wooden planks, um, sort of in like a U shape with a, another wooden plank underneath it. And so because of that, this cleric also can be turned unemployed. There we go. Because of that, um, just a second. Come on, come on. Come on, you can do it, you can do it. Come on, a villager. Yes, there we go. <laughs> because of that, you can um, basically protect yourself from mobs. You can use it to uh, very effectively 
uh, you know, not be killed by creeper explosions. Make a bed as soon as you can. So important. So overlooked. Even some late game players do not do this. Sleep every night. Make a bed. It just is worth it. Um, there's no reason to not, unless you, you know, are out to fight mobs or something. But, you know, outside of that. And, uh, yeah, you know, even like in hardcore, I'd say like, biggest thing in hardcore, not a total of undying, it's honestly a bed, because then it protects you early game. Um, you know, maybe not so much late game, but there's that. So, put this over here. Again, second villager, we're transporting villagers. Uh, feel free to ask any questions you want at any point during the stream. Someone says another scares me what to do. Well, I mean, I think that, you know, what's... There's a villager. Which, what's always good to think about is what part of the nether scares you. Is it the, you know, maybe the, the mobs of the uh, nether fortress? And obviously, that's not what I meant to do. But oh, that's not what I meant to do either. <laughs> anyway, and, you know, uh, the big thing for me, I would say, is to sort of learn the dangers of the nether and learn ways of dealing with it without dying. So, stupid villager. So, for example, um... Uh, bow and arrow is great to deal with ghasts. If you have issues with ghasts, you can definitely use the bow and arrow for that. Come on, you stupid villager. And then also, uh, with piglins, you can wear a gold helmet. A gold helmet will actually protect you a lot in the nether, because wearing that gold helmet will mean that no piglins will attack you unless you open a chest next to them, which you're probably not going to be doing. And the thing you can do as well is warped fungus. That'll distract the hoglins. So those are some good uh, tricks you could use. To not have an issue. Someone says you can crouch and don't go through the portal. I'm just trying to actually deal with the villager without being able to see it at this point. So we'll probably just leave the... Uh, we'll probably put it this way because we can maybe just kind of... Yeah, there we go. Force it in. So we're going to again go into our F5 mode here. We can kind of turn without hurting our villager. We can't suffocate ourselves in the boat, but we can suffocate. You can actually suffocate another player. We'll remake our portal here, because why not? And, um... Yeah, for sure, but we can basically deal with the villager here. And uh, also, crouching when being in a portal does not <laughs> does not stop you from going through it. It's like we're crouching right now, and if you notice what happens, we go through the portal. So maybe that's something in Bedrock, uh, but that does not work in Java. So we're going to go this way. What does Dragon Breath do? Dragon Breath uh, makes it so that you can create lingering potions, and in Java is the pathway to be getting tipped arrows. So uh, in Bedrock, that's not how you get tipped arrows, but in Java, it is. Someone says, how do you stop drowns from spawning? Great question, because drowns can be really uh, frustrating. Um, the best trick to let making drowns not spawn is to, of course, we're going to get that gas first, is to uh, basically light up the area. So for instance, you can use like sea lanterns. Sea pickles are a great choice because they kind of look good. Um, if you're in like a, a river, what in the world? Oh, that's interesting. Also dangerous. Okay. Anyway, if you are, um, you know, uh, next to a river, maybe the river has drowns in it. A lot of drowns spawn in, in, uh, in Minecraft. And so a big trick could be go through the river, throw down some sea pickles, uh, maybe throw down some things, even put torches on like the sides of the river. Uh, it can be a better solution than nothing, just about raising that light level in the river to the point where you don't have those drowns spawn. Another thing too, maybe put some fences along the river, around the ocean. Um, it'll at least protect you where your base is. So those would be some tricks I would say against drowns, of course. A conduit too um, will hurt drowns if they're next to it, so you could make one of those if you're later game. Someone in the chat says that I am very chill when I'm talking. I guess I am. I, I know sometimes people will laugh because I'll be like doing something really serious. And I'll just be like, oh, we'll probably run away from that uh, wither right now because it is firing at us. And that does tend to be really dangerous. So probably the best course of action is to not be next to it. That's why I moved away from it. If you're close to something and that thing is dangerous, you don't want to be next to it. But you probably know that already because you have basic common sense. Anyway... <laughs> We'll go this way, and um, we're going to take that uh, villager, and we're going to put it in a minecart. Oh, that was close, a little, a little tight there on the corner. And we're, of course, going to put it up our minecart track, back to where that other villager was. We are going to quickly inspect the top of this area to make sure it has everything we need in it. And so, uh, we'll do that. We'll go this way, 
Um, I think we're actually low on a rail. There we go. Put down the minecart. Push the minecart. I hear a villager. Oh yeah, that's... So I was talking about this earlier. This is a real issue when it happens. Kind of. I also hear a ghast. Let's go deal with that first. Uh, but what'll happen is the villagers will get into two things at once. And it's a real pain because it's kind of a three things at once. Um, very annoying to deal with. Let's start with the looting sword. There we go. And to deal with it, we just have to destroy some of those uh, things. So we'll go back here. I think it's the right way. It is. I still hear a ghast, so we'll just look out for that. Hopefully, don't destroy everything. And uh, we'll turn and hit boxes. Get out our axe. We have to hit the corner edge without hitting the villager, which is kind of a annoying. Let's try it. There we go. And the villager is, is loose. Okay. Okay, that is, that is not what I want to have happen. That is exactly what happened. Thank you, villager, for being as annoying as you could possibly be. Okay. This is going to be annoying, isn't it? <laughs> the villager has zero idea what it's doing in terms of pathfinding, so it's... Okay. Uh, we could dig it into the ground, but it's not always a good idea, because we don't actually know where the ground goes. Um, does it go anywhere bad? No, not really. We'll, we'll try digging it into the ground. Into the ground? Okay. Let's try on hitboxes first so I can actually see what I'm doing. Probably a good idea. Um, there we go. Okay, now it's trapped, thankfully. Now it's mad about that, it's jumping around. We'll get a uh, minecart in there. Thankfully we still have some extra rails, or just powered rails. We'll grab the extra rails, and we'll get it up in there. <laughs> Sometimes this does happen, unfortunately. Again, this was because the boat and the minecart uh, sort of, you know, connected. I don't think that should happen. Um, but, you know, it's, uh, it is something you want to deal with. So, we'll break these blocks. We will get our little pathway built down there. I really wish I had some torches with me, because it is so dim in the nether. Uh, that is one thing I really, really, really prefer in Bedrock, is that the nether is actually quite bright. Um, at least bright compared to Java. And so because of that, you can see a lot better. And I get the nether being dark, it makes more sense that it's dark, but uh, having that brightness, that level of lightness in the nether, um, much nicer. Uh, okay, we'll put that here. Turn this around. Uh, get the villager in a minecart. Two, I suppose, is step one. Make a little circle. Put in the minecart. Instant grab villager. There we go. Boop. Done. Oh, there is the ghast. Okay, there we go. Get the ghast. I'm only a little bit nervous when I'm dealing with villagers that are hard to replace. So, we'll grab that. Boom. There we go. And we'll grab our loot. There's also a skeleton. There it is. Our shield. And we'll grab that. And we will get our skeleton here. And we will get the materials from it. Now, basically, what we need to do from this point onwards is we need to get the villager back to where our other villager was, which is actually pretty easy, which is a good thing. I'm glad it's not difficult or I would be annoyed. And um, the villager can get off the minecart or kind of get off the minecart track. That's fine. We just have to push it up manually, which should work. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. Maybe not. Just, this could all go terribly wrong. And there we go. Perfect. <laughs> we pushed it all the way up. Uh, we are almost out of food, too. We should be careful of that. And yeah, our villager is going there. We have super chats. Look at this. Thank you. It, the first one is from Interdimensional Rainbow. It says, I missed your stream so much. So happy to have you back. Thank you for doing this for us. Well, I'm so glad to do the streams. Uh, it's definitely one of my sort of favorite things about being a content creator is streaming. You know, it's a very direct way of connecting with my audience and making content that Hopefully, most people enjoy a lot of watchback on these. Uh, the amount of watchback tends to be different um, on, you know, uh, what I'm doing and maybe how repeatable of a stream it is. But overall, it's doing pretty good. And speaking of the stream, thank you to everyone who's new on the stream. Uh, the stream is actually at, I believe, a record number of concurrent viewers, which is awesome. We probably reached the record a little while ago and I didn't notice because I'm too busy. Uh, bring this villager around, but thank you so much to everyone who just joined the stream. Feel free to comment anything you want in the chat, maybe in the uh, comments of the video after the stream is done, watch it back, learn more about it. But thank you so much to everyone who's watching the stream. We're not ending in any sense, uh, but I just wanted to say thank you to the people who are already here and are already uh, sort of maybe new subscribers. Like I said, I've gained like a huge percentage of my total subscribers really recently, and so, uh, you know, maybe like 20% or something. 
So thank you so much to all those people who are just newly uh, in the sort of iCraft MC uh, fan base. And I really am thankful for that. And uh, I'm really glad this stream has reached so many people. Feel free to like the stream right now. One of the reasons why we've been so successful is because you people have been liking the stream. Be sure to keep liking the stream. Press that like button. I know it seems so arbitrary. Everyone always talks about pressing the like button, but it does work. It is a really great way, a really uh, instant way, free way that you can make the stream. Simply have more viewers. That's about all it does. Uh, but it does help a lot. It makes more people see this content. I think more people learn about the wonderful art of bringing villagers through the nether and hopefully not getting killed by ghasts and our villager doesn't get shot by a skeleton twice like last time. So this is our second villager. And this villager is going to be one of the two that we use to of course breed up an entire villager base. These are plains biome villagers. We're going to be breeding these villagers inside of the Stony Peaks biome. I'm interested to see what kind of baby villagers we get. I could look it up, but I may not. And I believe um, they may be desert themed. They may not too. That's actually, no, they're not. Because I actually have a villager trading area in a... Uh, in a stony peaks already stony peaks are funny because they kind of don't seem like a warm biome but they are um but yeah this is a stony peaks and i think this will go to the right area let's see put the villager through uh, but either way we're gonna have ourselves a great villager trading area no matter what type of villagers we get i don't really care uh, but it is vaguely interesting and we are going to go over here i will put down a uh, boat and then we'll go over here sleep a little bit and then after that of course we can continue on uh, because we have so many viewers on the stream right now again thank you so much to all the concurrent viewers it looks like we actually at some point reached uh, 860 which is really great and um, we're going to continue on so so we're gonna do something special actually i think in a minute here uh maybe not in a minute but fairly soon uh we do have both villagers over now the other villager is now in the boat we're gonna put it over here where it belongs but i think it may be time for something we haven't done for a while and i know it you know it seems maybe a little basic at this stage uh but we might we might go some caving we might do some mining maybe uh a little abandoned mine shaft exploration a little sort of you know classic survival kind of things these things people will tend to stop doing at a certain point you know, a certain point in their world, they'll stop exploring, they'll stop enjoying the overworld that uh, Minecraft has generated for them, and, you know, for me personally, I really enjoy exploring the Minecraft overworld, and so I think we'll maybe do a little bit of that. We do have our Elytra too, which is nice, so it gives us a bit more ability to do that as well. Again, we're just going to surround this, we do need a torch, I think, is there a torch in here? There is, so we'll actually just go like this, and then they'll both be lit up enough. There we go. And this is the ugliest little structure, but that tends to be what most people make uh, if they're just doing something temporary, which is what this is. It is a temporary structure. We can also get rid of this area here. And eventually, uh, we'll come back here and we'll make a villager breeder, villager trading area, sort of the whole nine yards. And it's all going to start from those two villagers that will probably be locked in a villager breeder uh, for the rest of their lives, unfortunately. But that is how villager trading works. So we'll put these in here, put all of these random materials. Um, that is a sort of mission that's successful right there, which is great. Um, we do need more food, which is not... Uh, phenomenally great but we are going to go over to where our area is so we have all our supplies back to our base and um, take a look at kind of take inventory take a look at the items we have use those items that we have to then get ourselves to a better place in this world and to of course um, level up this entire survival world experience now something i'd like to recommend to anyone if you've been really enjoying my content and you want to support the channel directly, something we have is channel memberships. Now, channel memberships are a really great thing that um, they're not really that new, but um, a lot of channels don't do them or they won't really talk about them. We have a, a pretty decent channel membership program here uh, on my channel, and what we have is uh, not only is there actually a VIP section, that's right, so if you are a server booster on Discord, or if you are a channel member, uh, you get unlocked to a VIP Discord section, you get a role on my Discord, um, you get to kind of communicate with me a little bit more directly on the community posts that are uh, special to just the members, um, I definitely need to do more of those, but I still have a decent number. 
and there's lots of interesting sort of uh, conversations going on there. You also get access to a monthly message that you get to send in the chat, kind of like a free super chat basically. Um, and as well as that, there's all these emotes you can use in the comments, uh, not just the super chat, or not just the live chat, but also in the comments. So feel free, if you'd like, to have to um, support the channel with a channel membership. All right, so we have a lot of stuff, and they're kind of all unsorted, unfortunately. Um, let's start with ores, I think. We're going to take a look at the ores we have just for a second, get a little inventory here. Uh, we're not going to be sorting for 20 minutes or anything, uh, but we'll just take a quick little look here at kind of what we have, um, getting a good look at that. In terms of like our long-term base designs, I do want to at some point go into like a creative world, do some testing, maybe get some ideas, some submissions from, you know, the viewers. Maybe you guys would like that if we did like a competition of people sort of working together to come up with the best design for my base. That actually could work really well. We'll probably do that. So um, whatever, we end up, whatever we end up doing, um, we'll definitely make it a, a fun thing of building the mega base on this survival live world. I believe I started this series a little while ago. It was, I think it was around September. So it has been a while. It's been about, I guess about four months then. And it doesn't seem like it's been four months, but time has been going pretty quick uh, as it tends to. And um, yeah, we can sort of uh, see what's been done already in this world. Not a massive amount, because we've kind of been focusing on very specific things. But still, every single stage of this world's been live streamed. And we actually have a super chat from Linda Knapp, and it says, I am so happy I made this stream. Um, have to leave to do my chores now, but we'll catch it on the replay later. Thank you for the videos. Well, good luck, and I'm so glad you're able to capture it. And I uh, hope you enjoy the replay as well. We're going to make sure to uh, keep up doing some interesting things throughout here. And definitely uh, thank you again for the super chat and for the support of my channel. I really appreciate it. Um, it is people like you that help me uh, make videos and do it for a living. So we're going to take this redstone dust and this iron here and we're going to keep sorting this. We should have a place for amethyst shards. I thought we did. But I guess at this point our sorting system is so sort of, you know, jumbled that it doesn't really matter. It's still just nice to have a little bit of, you know, sorting in the whole mess. Uh, so anyway, we do have that. Now, something I could do actually, in fact we probably will, we should get our other Silk Touch pickaxe. We should get that mended. And the way we're going to do that, really interesting actually, and we'll in fact use materials that we got from the Deep Dark earlier to do it. Uh, and that is, basically, we have beneath us a deep dark biome, and we need some torches for it. There are torches in here, I think. There are. There we go. And our deep dark biome is just down here, uh, right beneath us, because of course we're in the mountains, so I mean, you know, everything's basically deep dark. Watch this crazy fall, by the way. I, I love this so much. This is so fun. No water at the bottom, so we have to be, like, really careful. <laughs> but anyway, here's the deep dark. Um, you can see we've been using it quite a bit, and uh, it's kind of, uh, you know, not the best ecological preservation uh, sort of methods here, but, you know, it's still here, and um, we can kind of look for any other areas. <laughs> we should probably do this somewhere else, actually. We have definitely cleared this out a lot. Um, I'll probably go up to the other cave. Uh, but we've been using this as sort of a temporary XP farm, because it does work, and, uh, yeah. The trick with it is, of course, it's like a stagnant source of XP, like, um, you know, just like energy in real life, you know, some sources of energy might be like coal in the ground, or they're just kind of sitting there, easy to mine up, easy to use, but of course they're limited, so sort of like that, just like an XP farm might be like, you know, a more renewable source of energy. Skulk mining is sort of like mining a, a limited source, although well, I guess, you know, coal in Minecraft itself is also limited, so it's kind of interesting, although the great thing about Skulk in Minecraft is it's not very limited, so we have a lot of it, we don't really have to worry too much about running out. Even just in this one cave here, you can see how much of it we have. So let's start by mending our elytra. Our elytra is uh, on us right now, which means that basically uh, it's going to mend really quick, and you can see it did. If we put this in our offhand, you can watch how incredibly quickly this will mend too. Very, very quick. We're getting a ton of XP here. Just clearing out all this skulk. This is not, again, our long-term base area. So, like, maybe if it was, I would kind of mind more about getting rid of all the skulk in these caves, because it does look kind of cool. But there's a point to where it's like, well, the Skulk does sort of symbolize the Warden. The Warden's a bad thing. So, you know, with that in mind, it doesn't really matter if we're mining the Skulk in these caves or not. 
And someone says, ever thought about restoring an ancient city? I have. It's a project I kind of started doing in this one survival world. Definitely have not gotten a lot of work done on it. But it's definitely a thought, and I think that the um, Ancient City is a really great project to restore. Honestly, any Minecraft, you know, uh, structure can be really good for kind of a restoration project or maybe an improvement, even something like maybe the old uh, Desert Temple, Jungle Temple, even a village, you know, improving existing things in the game can always be a really fun challenge and a really great way of just you know, enjoying the game in that specific way. Now, we have mined some of this, but not all of it. We're going to mine some more uh, skulk here. We need to put our ladder down there. And you can see, again, our pickaxe there is mending lightning fast, and that's because, of course, we're gaining fun amounts of XP, just tons and tons of XP, crazy amounts of XP. And uh, there may be, like, any some shriekers here, because it's not really lit up. So we'll be fairly careful, but again, overall, uh, we should be fine. So we'll just go through here, mine up some more of these skulk blocks. I'm not actually sure why we didn't start this big cave first. I kind of do know why. It's because of there were some wardens here earlier, but um, overall, we still have a great area to get tons and tons of these skulk blocks and to mend up all of our tools and uh, all of our items. And also, I uh, thank you to the person a little bit earlier who joined to become a member of the I squad and uh, welcome to that and all the benefits it has. And we're going to keep uh, mining up all the skulk blocks here and getting ourselves a ton of XP. And I know some people don't like mining the catalysts, uh, but it doesn't matter too much. We don't actually really need them right now anyway. And even to make like a Skulk XP farm, you're not going to need that many catalysts, uh, really. And in fact, most of them would just use one catalyst. Um, the catalysts are kind of a non-renewable thing, uh, but you can technically get them by killing the Warden, which is, you know, not the easiest thing to do, but definitely not impossible. Uh, and of course, you know, compared to certain things, it's not too bad. So we can go through here, you can see we've gotten to a limit of XP. Because there's no light here, uh, there might be Shriekers, but we're not at a high warning level, and I don't really care to be honest, because we're going to get out of here in a second. So we may as well take a little look around, look out for some of the old Shriekers, see what's around here, maybe kill this skeleton. It actually goes into Dripstone, we should collect some of that Dripstone, we could use it for renewable lava. Uh, maybe I'll do that. Oh, there's a lot of hostels here though, which is not shocking, we're actually out of food, which is um, kind of our fault. There's a creeper, which is not ideal. Let's get out of here, actually, before the creeper explodes us. Um, slightly not super great scenario right there. And the trick, run away a little bit, regain some of that health. <laughs> Looks like that creeper just decided to try and kill the skeleton, and I'm not sure if it was successful or not, but uh, we'll go down here. We're gonna get this. You'll notice there's a lot of mobs. That's because the mobs can't be... There's actually a bubbling charge there. But the reason why the mobs are... Uh, there's so many there, is because they can't, of course, spawn in the uh, deep dark biome. And so because of that, they're more condensed into a smaller area. It's like, think of the amount of mobs in a Minecraft world as being a puddle of water. If you have a very large area for the water to flow to, it's just going to be on the ground, you know, sort of just laying there in a big wide open puddle. Uh, but if you take all that water and you want to clean it up, you can't get rid of it, it won't, you know, evaporate. You'll put it maybe in a bottle, and if the if the water is in a bottle, well, the water's in a smaller area, but there's more water in that area. So that's like exactly how mob spawning works, in the sense that you know if you kind of limit mobs from spawning in certain areas, there'll just be more of them in the areas that they can be. That's kind of how mob farms work: is you basically create an area where mobs can spawn, and they can only spawn in that area, very high up in the air generally. And so if you're in like a single player world and you have a mob farm, you're kind of condensing that entire you know just like um, our sort of Thing. There may be a cup of water into that small area instead of spreading it all throughout the Minecraft world. And that's why that limit is made uh, so ridiculous in terms of the spawning of mobs. You know, how could Minecraft survive with so many mobs spawning? It's kind of unrealistic. Uh, but it isn't unrealistic because generally they're going to be spread across a really wide area. But here, if we're in the deep dark, just a small amount of sort of mob applicable spawning areas exists, which it does because if you look over there, that's also deep dark. So this is like a little pocket of mob spawnable area and an area of non-mob spawnable area we have a really really concentrated area where mobs can be and i see shriekers here there are shriekers here uh, as my you know uh, subscribe notification says shriekers tending to spawn um we're gonna probably crouch through here a little bit i don't see really any reason why we need to explore this but we can and uh, we could have maybe eventually mine out some xp here uh, but overall there's not a whole lot to look at 
Um, there's a Shrieker. I don't really care, to be honest. Uh, we may as well let the Shrieker go off once, just for fun. We could summon in a Warden. That'd be interesting, actually. Why not? Um, people, people hate it when I do things like this on stream, but it's hilarious, so let's do it. Let's summon in a Warden. Because I don't care. And uh, there's number one. But we'll do, though, because I do care a little bit more than I might want you to believe <laughs> in terms of not wanting to lose my items. I do care that much. Um, is I will try and sort of see the way out, which is over there. So there's warning level one. Let's go get warning level two. All right. Yeah, again, we just want to walk right up there. In fact, we can fly up there, I think. Uh, we'll get our uh, little fireworks in hand. Let's try and get warning level three. Come on, just bug the shrieker there. There we go, warning level three. We'll get the warning uh, warden in a second here. Kind of a good reason to keep shriekers around, really, is to, uh, you know, not destroy all of them, because then you can do things like this. <laughs> Although I think a lot of people wouldn't want to do things like this, so. There's that again. We're kind of just viewing the, the way to fly out. Let's get this warden. There we go. We're just going to crouch. We'll, we'll look at the warden for a second. There is the warden right there. He looks uh, very wardeny. And uh, we're just going to kind of fly. Really, we can just, like, crouch away. We'll let the darkness effect go away so we can see that warden. We'll look at it for just a second here. We'll get a nice view of it right in the uh, strange face it has. And um, it looks like it's mad at that bat. I think it just killed the bat. Now, sniffing means it's trying to find us, so it's kind of over there. We're probably just going to walk out of here, honestly. Um, but yeah, we did get a warden to spawn there. Again, wardens aren't actually that dangerous. People tend to think of them as being more dangerous than they are. Uh, really, what we want to do, just walk away from them, and they'll kind of go away. So as you can even see here, uh, the warden hasn't really followed us. We can see it, uh, but it's all the way, all the way back there. Like, all the way kind of through there. So already, we've just walked away from it. It's not that dangerous, although we do have... I was going to say we have a bow and arrow on us, but I don't think we do anymore, actually, which is annoying. Uh, we're going to fly this way, though, kind of back to our entrance, uh, which is pretty close here, pretty wide open entrance. It uh, looks like it's nighttime all the way up there, but we're going to fly all the way up. You can actually hear the uh, so uh, sound of going up the ladder kind of spams. It's funny sounding. And that was just almost enough. There we go. We're out, and then we can go sleep. We can actually see how kind of luminescent our relays are. They're very bright, uh, sort of at the nighttime like this. And uh, yeah, we'll go over there. Uh, someone says, do I play Fortnite? Uh, I do not play Fortnite at all. In fact, I've actually never played Fortnite before. Maybe once on like a friend's computer, but I, I don't think so. No, I don't think I have. It's, uh, <laughs> Fortnite's kind of a meme of a game now, honestly, but anyway, there's our dripstone. We got that. We could get an automatic sort of lava farm if we wanted out of that later on. Um, someone says, what are my recommended building blocks? Blocks you can get a lot of if you're doing something big. So like wood, deep slate, stone, uh, black stone, basalt, um, you know, uh, concrete. Uh, I mean, just kind of things that are not going to be that difficult to get. You know, if you want to build out of like, let's say, you know, um, gold blocks, you can. You're just going to need a gold farm for that. Or if you want to build out of like something like, let's say kelp blocks again you can do that it's just going to take a lot of effort to get all those blocks so what i would tend to say is to build with things that look good but are also fairly easy to get and a great example of that will be the uh, soon coming to minecraft bamboo blocks as we walk next to our bamboo here they'll be very easy to get but also they're going to look really great so that's a good example of something that it's a good building block um, but of course it's all up to you and kind of what you want to build with um, but I would definitely recommend that. Some of my favorites are spruce and the deep slate blocks, blackstone, um, all kinds of great building blocks in Minecraft, really. So we have our sticks here, actually, from the scaffolding. We could, in fact, we'll craft the scaffolding into sticks, I think, or the bamboo into sticks. Um, funny enough, I was had a video a little bit ago about how to turn dirt into diamonds. And some people really liked the video. In fact, most people did, which is good. I, I like making videos that people enjoy. And uh, yeah, in the video, um, talking about going from dirt to diamonds, I was crafting the um, bamboo I had into sticks. And a lot of people didn't actually know you could do that. So that is something you can do in Minecraft, is craft bamboo into sticks. Someone says, how could I bring the warden to the nether and trap it? Pretty easy. Uh, you just want to kind of lure it uh, into the um, nether portal. Once you've done that, uh, simply have a little distraction device with like two observers and a trapdoor or two trapdoor or uh, two 
skulk sensors in a trapdoor and put that in the nether and just let it kind of travel towards that you can kind of use like those kind of systems being turned on and off to decide where it moves like you could totally make like a little arena where the warden kind of moves where you want it to and of course once it's in the nether it'd just be like any other dimension you know trapping it in there um i'm pretty sure wardens can go through nether portals i've actually don't think i've ever tried that before um but if they it's if they're too like big to go through them which i don't think they would be but if they are uh then you can also make a bit of a wider nether portal since of course nether portals can be made like super huge funny enough i'm sure most people know it but most people don't do it it's the fact of making huge nether portals it's like a really cool thing to do honestly is making absolutely massive nether portals definitely one of my favorite things to do someone says where i'm from um, very commonly asked question. I am from uh, Canada. Let's see here. Um, Alright, so... Obviously in terms of our sort of base building project, again, we have those villagers there now. I think something also important we could do is kind of like start deciding exactly where the base is going to be. In fact, something I'm going to do right now is I think we'll take a look at a, uh, we could take a look, so we could do some tests actually in terms of like different build designs, things we could look at for that. Um, I do have a general idea of what the build's gonna look like. We could kind of try and isolate that a little bit more and get like a really great um, kind of idea of exactly how we want the build to look. So I'm gonna go over here, probably start digging away on the mountain as we discuss this. Which I think are, we're probably dug a lot of it away already, honestly. Like, they're just this bit at the top here. Maybe we'll work on that. Um, and again, feel free in the comments to ask any question you want about Minecraft. Like the stream if you're enjoying it. I actually have all these social medias. There they are. Twitter, at iCraft underscore MC. Maybe one day I'll have at iCraft MC. If anyone's watching who works at Twitter or knows someone who works at Twitter, please send me a business email. I want at iCraft MC. <laughs> But anyway, um, we also have my Discord link in the description, uh, and also on the pinned uh, comment by our moderator, Tori, uh, actually community admin as well. So shout out to Tori and all my other admins. And then also we have my Twitch, uh, which is iCraftMC on Twitch. I, I've never streamed on there, but you know what? Why not follow me, because then I won't bother you either. And uh, we also have Reddit, r slash iCraftMC. I love my posts on Reddit. Um, some hilarious posts on there. Uh, not that I've made, that I've seen people have made on my Reddit. Uh, so if you want to join some community fun on there, we even have some hilarious stream highlights. There might even be a highlight from this stream on there. You never know. And so feel free to follow me on Reddit for that as well. But back to Minecraft. And of course, on Minecraft here, we're deciding that we dislike this mountain and we're going to flatten it. Uh, we well, we kind of do like this mountain, but we dislike this part of it. So we're going to flatten it down to where we're going to build our base. And uh, I just, I still love the view from here. In fact, this is going to kill my frame rates, but who cares? I'm going to turn my, okay, I do care. <laughs> <laughs> that, that really killed my frame rates. I just turned my render distance to 64. If this was bedrock, we'd be getting like 200 frames still, but it's not bedrock, so we're not getting 200 frames. We're getting like five. And, well, not five. It looks like five. Probably the stream is uh, really laggy right now. I'll turn this off in a second, but uh, 64 chunk render distance is definitely an interesting thing. We'll see if it can handle it for a minute and get a great look at the mountain range we're in, because we're in a beautiful, beautiful area, an amazing seed. And so it would be interesting to get like a good view of kind of what we're looking at around here of like this mountain and just the entire area here. Um, it doesn't look even that much further than it was. I think it takes a long time to render it in. Um, yeah, you can kind of see it is rendering very, very far away mountains like over there. We might have been able to see the stronghold from here, honestly. I don't think so. Uh, but the stronghold is, like, not that far from here. Someone says, what mods do I suggest for great video quality? Again, I'm assuming you mean, like, what uh, performance mods? So, like, you know, Optifine or Sodium. There aren't that many, as far as I know. Um, but yeah, like, Optifine's always good. Sodium can work as well. Um, it's kind of better in certain ways, kind of worse in other ways. Optifine does, like, add a lot of extra things that, you know, a lot of people don't like. So, like, the, you know, weird torch patterns and stuff. So, um, 
you know, if you just want like something really bare bones, I would definitely suggest like sodium, but if you want like more extra stuff, Optifine can be good. Uh, we're gonna eat a little bit of food here. We've also um, completely filled our inventory with stone, uh, which is not shocking. And yeah, we can see there's a village. I didn't even know there was a village there. Maybe I did. I don't think I did. Is that west? West. I don't think I've been to that village. Maybe I have. We'll have to take a look at that. That's funny. We, we did not see that village before. We're seeing it now. Yeah, we'll maybe check out that village in a second. But anyway, uh, let's get our, our frames are terrible. Uh, absolutely terrible. Probably worse on the stream too. Uh, but we'll fly up really quick. We'll get a quick little look around. We did see that village. Um, yeah, there's that village. I don't see anything really else. It's kind of half loaded in here. There's our base there. Uh, we'll go back to 24 so we don't destroy everything. And this was the way to that village, so we'll take a look at that. Um, I saw a blacksmith chest all the way from over here. So we'll take a look and see if that blacksmith chest has anything that we want. Probably not, but we'll take a look. There's the village. Yeah, there's that blacksmith chest. I don't think I've been here before. I might have. We'll know if there's stuff in the blacksmith chest. That's always a good sign if a place has been raided. Oh, well, we have been here because the lava's gone from there. Uh, and the stuff's gone from the chest. So I'm not sure when we raided this. Must have been a long time ago, though. You know... I'm, I'm, I just re remembered right now the fact this is much closer to our base than the other place was, and we could have literally, we, what we could have done is we could have boated villagers over here, right, from that village, so we have villagers that are right over here, nice and easy, and then from there, we could have literally had a quick little portal destination uh, right to the base up here, that would have been um, much quicker, but Anyway, it is what it is. I actually didn't realize how big this mountain was till I flew to the top of it again. Like, it's it's not that big of a mountain, but it is kind of, like, compared to different things. It's so funny how perspective in Minecraft and sort of how big mountains are and how different things generate has changed so much in Minecraft 1.18. I know we're, you know, almost in 1.20 here, but 1.18 was a massive update. And I think just like, let's say 1.13 or 1.16 or even 1.14, this is an update that'll be talked about for a long time in terms of the fact of you know, 1.18 really made Minecraft a different game, not in a bad way, uh, but definitely uh, in a way that makes it, you know, function differently in almost every way. Especially if you're thinking about things of like the world generation. Minecraft's world generation is something that I've always been very interested in. Um, I think it's one of the things I know the best about the game is world generation. Uh, and it's definitely one of my favorite parts. Uh, but still, it has changed so much over the years. It really is something that resembles sort of a different kind of... Uh, meta a different like way that the game is kind of set up so you know the best ways of doing things and the the ways that different things are set up definitely is made somewhat different someone says if i worked with llama caravans much that actually reminds me that is one topic i've not covered is llamas there's a lot to cover but anyway they're trying to live as a nomad and currently they have 19 llamas uh, but sometimes keeping them all in a caravan is tedious sometimes it's great any potential tips. Well, llama caravans are really interesting. If you're wondering what in the world a llama caravan is in Minecraft, it's a good question because the vast majority of players do not use them. But llama caravans are kind of a cool feature that do enable players to live a sort of different lifestyle inside of their Minecraft worlds. And more or less what you do is you have one llama that you have connected to a lead. And these other llamas will kind of do this strange thing. It's really funny actually. I'll it show it off, um, but I can't really on this world. Uh, not very easily anyway. But the, all the other llamas will kind of like form a line. So they're kind of move like a snake where all the different llamas are connected to each other and they'll kind of follow you. I think the idea would be, of course, in real life, all those llamas would be connected with leads to each other. So uh, that's kind of what a llama caravan is. The problem is, as this person is saying, they do tend to break up. And so what you can do is you can have multiple llamas connected to leads. So you could have like most of your llamas to leads. Um, that can work. It just obviously is not as fun. Um, another thing too, in Bedrock, I believe you can actually connect a lead to mobs that are in a boat. So if you have to, let's say, have a bunch of your llamas go across like a river or an ocean, you could do that if you're in Bedrock Edition. If you're not, that doesn't work though. If you're having issues, let's say, identifying your llamas, you could always use different carpet colors for them. Yeah, in terms of specific tricks for keeping the llama caravan together, um, you can also walk around like this. So in F5 mode, you can kind of see that llama caravan, make sure it's not breaking apart. Uh, I can suggest that sometimes. Um, you know, just sort of like riding a horse, getting more perspective. But yeah, overall, just kind of more leads, uh, making shorter caravans, uh, probably the best idea. 
someone says, how can I one hit stone? Great question. Well, I have a beacon over here. The beacon has the effect of haste too. We got that beacon specifically so that we could mine out this mountain to make ourselves a mega base. So everything's kind of been for this big mega base project. If you have an efficiency five diamond pickaxe or an efficiency five netherite pickaxe, uh, but nothing worse than that, then basically... Um, combined with the haste 2, you can instantly mine certain blocks, not all, so unfortunately you cannot instantly mine deep slate for example, which is quite annoying, but you can definitely uh, carve through all these stone blocks like they were nothing, and so yeah, that's basically how I'm doing that, and you can actually see like just how many stone blocks are on the ground around here, and uh, we have that. Someone says with this much stone, like uh, trade all of it or keep most of it for future builds. I think it depends a lot on whether or not we're going to be having a uh, stone base. So if the base is going to be made with stone in it um, or things like, let's say, gravel and uh, deep slate, of course, I wouldn't really need stone then or cobblestone. Um, but yeah, I would say, you know, I would see most of it being traded. But I guess it does depend. And yeah, like probably overall, I'd say a good mix. Like I'd say probably at least half will be traded. Um, the rest though could definitely be uh, built with. Um, stone trades are probably my favorite trade, honestly, just because it's so stupidly overpowered. Um, if you're wondering what I'm talking about, uh, Mason villagers in Minecraft will do 20 stone for an emerald. But you can discount this by zombifying them four times into one stone for an emerald. So imagine if every single block we're breaking here is like an emerald. That's kind of how overpowered that is. And of course, you know, here we're not breaking this for emeralds, although speaking of emeralds, we just found two emerald ore here. Um, but we're breaking this just to get rid of the stone. So stone is like a garbage item, basically. And then with turning that garbage item into emeralds, which are, you know, very overpowered item, uh, then with that, you can kind of turn nothing into riches, which is always a great thing in Minecraft. And I guess in real life too, if you've found a way of doing that. Someone says the stick trades are also overpowered. They definitely can be. The problem with the stick trades is that they tend to start with 32 sticks for an emerald. And you can never fully zombify 32 sticks for an emerald down to one stick for an emerald. And so for me personally, I like the one for one trades. So those stick trades can be good. And of course, you know, sticks are an easy thing to get. Um, that is why I would tend to suggest the stone trade over that. Is because if you're working with a late game world, the stone trade is going to give you a lot more out of a lot less items. Even if, you know, let's say stone is technically harder to get than sticks, which it isn't really, but if it is, um, then of course, you know, that would be kind of more of a late game option. Uh, but definitely the Fletcher stick trade is a, is a popular option and one that can work fairly well. Someone says, how is my pickaxe not breaking? Well, it does have Unbreaking 3 on it. Of course, Unbreaking 3 raises durability by a bit. Interesting thing, by the way. So a lot of players, when they're first playing Minecraft, they'll make their first pickaxe, right? And they'll just kind of keep it unenchanted. And eventually, when they get the materials for enchanting, it's like, oh, I shouldn't waste enchanting this half-broken pickaxe. But in reality, you should. And the reason why is that even Unbreaking 1, which you can totally get on a completely, um, you know, non-book leveled up enchantment table so literally just an enchantment table nothing around it and if you have that just with unbreaking one you're basically doubling your pickaxe's durability so you can basically get two pickaxes for the price of one by literally just throwing it into a completely unupgraded enchanting table that's right it's, it's actually crazy how worthwhile it is to, to low level enchant things especially with enchantments like unbreaking certain things like efficiency one they are pretty useless but if you're talking about you know unbreaking one it's a completely different story and of course you know unbreaking two and three are also great um they just give you kind of more of that same benefit someone says i have the tutorial voice all the time i don't really have the tutorial voice all the time i guess like my more casual voice is probably more like this kind of a bit lower a bit more enunciated a bit less enunciated but like no one wants to hear someone speaking like this so what i tend to do is i try and speak a bit more you know maybe if i'm speaking to myself i'll be less like that but i actually enjoy speaking like this i think that you know everyone kind of has different ways of speaking just like how you know if you went up to speak in front of someone maybe to present a project or something you know you wouldn't be like hello for my project today i'm gonna you know you kind of want to put on like a you want to be be um there's a word for it uh sort of um exclamatory maybe that's right but but just sort of you know very um uh 
easy, like speak in a way that's maybe more easy to understand. And that's kind of what I try and do in my videos is speak in a way that I think is nicer to listen to, uh, more enunciated, easier to hear. You know, I found, I mean, certain YouTubers can be hard to understand. Maybe they'll speak way too quickly or maybe they'll speak way too slow. Um, I've had people uh, tell me that I speak too quickly and too slowly, which I guess depends on the time. Um, one thing I do as well, uh, unfortunately, is I'll tend to speak too quickly sometimes. Not really on videos, but in real life. So, you know, it's pretty common for me to, you know, kind of get speaking about something I'm really, really excited about it. So I'll start speaking through things very, very quickly. You know, for instance, this chest right here is made out of two double chests. Double chests are made out of eight planks. Each eight planks, eight plus eight makes 16. So 16 planks gives us a double chest. Aren't double chests great? Don't you love double chests? You know, obviously that's, that's way too quick. You, it's hard to understand that. So obviously I'm trying to, you know, speak in a way that even if, you know, I can think quickly, doesn't mean that I can, you know, describe things in a way that's actually easy to explain. Um, but something I love doing sometimes is like reading something and just seeing how quick I can go. And it's, I'm usually pretty quick. Uh, I don't know how quick I would be, but um, it's always kind of interesting things. So, you know, sometimes when I'm speaking to people in real life, I'll definitely start speaking about it at this speed right here, which is kind of hard to understand. And some people don't like hearing people going at this kind of a speed. This is kind of like double speed. Something kind of interesting <laughs> is that actually when I watch YouTube, I always watch it on two times speed, like basically always. Um, not music, of course, because that kind of ruins the music. But um, I do watch most videos on two times speed. So maybe that's why I speak so quickly normally. Uh, that, that could be the issue, to be honest, I'm not sure, but um, either way, it is definitely an interesting thing, and I tend to enjoy, uh, and I think that most people enjoy, kind of speaking at this pace. I could also, if I want to be really chill, and really get people to be quite tired, and also just really relax when I'm speaking, I could speak a lot slower, just like this, as we break these stone blocks on the mountain. We hear the delicate sounds of them breaking. It reminds you of sleep, that constant sound, the waves of the ocean, the beauty of this chicken, or maybe it's a duck. <laughs> so obviously that's a bit too slow as well. That's why I kind of try and find a balance between the ways I'm speaking, um, so that most people will tend to, you know, find that the most understandable. That's something I always tell people who are trying to become YouTubers, is to be coherent and to be understandable. That sounds so simple. It's really important because some people will kind of mutter, their audio will be messed up, they'll speak too quickly, they'll speak too slowly. Always important to make sure that people understand what you're trying to communicate to them. And really in every way, not just in Minecraft. So that's what kind of the little lesson, not lesson, but kind of, you know, um, explanation of, of the way I speak, I, the way I kind of speak this way. Someone says, uh, have you ever choked on broccoli? <laughs> Um, I don't know. I, I, I can't think of that specifically, um, so I'm not sure. Uh, but I, I would think, as far as I know, probably not. Like, I've definitely choked on food before, but I don't think on broccoli. Um, I know some people, like, when they were kids, didn't like broccoli. I don't think I ever really had a problem with broccoli. Um, but yeah, I don't think I ever ch choked on it anyway, which is a good thing, because it's not really good to choke on things. Um... All right, so we're starting to fill these up with stone really quickly, actually. We are going to switch to the fortune pick, um, unfortunately. Someone says, what am I going to do for 300k? Uh, I'm not sure if I'll do anything for 300k, to be honest. Um, there's a lot of milestones coming up. I may do something big for 500k. You know, people ask me a lot if I'll do a face reveal. I've seen some comments about that today. Uh, funny enough, there's actually now a Google autocomplete about um, my name, my age, and my face. So maybe at some point I'll reveal those things. I'm not sure. Uh, but I have nothing against doing those things. And, you know, maybe for a million subscribers or for half a million or something, I'll do a face reveal of some sort. I found the trick is, is that if I am going to do something like that, I want to actually create content, you know, video content. I, I love creating video content in real life and taking pictures and, you know, cameras and all these things. I find it really interesting. So it would be a really cool way of expanding into content by maybe having like, you know, content that includes a face cam or maybe like doing like a vlog or something. Um, something I will say is that if they do Minecon, uh, I'll definitely try and go to it. And if I go to it, I would definitely do a face reveal for that so we could do like fan meetups and stuff uh, so I'll definitely tell you that much if they if you do see a, a sort of announcement that says that there'll be a minecon this year in real life um, that could definitely be a, a very very likely way that I would do a face reveal is is to go to minecon and to sort of meet with all of uh, my fans there that attend um, 
which would be kind of a really cool thing. I hope they do uh, that for sure. And I think that, you know, um, Minecon is just, I really, really hope that they do a Minecon this year. I think it'd be so good for the community too, because it's 2023, you know, uh, there's still issues in the world, but I think that at the end of the day, things aren't going to get much better uh, in terms of, you know, certain concerns over why Minecon was canceled before. And so I think, you know, fundamentally, um, it would be a really great thing to do that. And uh, hopefully it's also not too, too far away. Um, I think it's going to be in Florida the next time, but I don't know that for sure. Um, but wherever it is, um, I'll definitely try and, and go to that. And uh, Mythic Mutations, who's actually the one who made my emotes, uh, feel free to spam emotes in the chat if you have ability to do that, which would be if you have a membership, um, is saying it'd be great to go to that as well. Um, I definitely would enjoy going to, to the Minecon. I've seen some great videos too from previous ones. Um, they tend to be kind of chaotic, but uh, it would be really cool, and maybe if I can even somehow got in contact with Mojang, which unfortunately I don't have any contact with Mojang right now. Um, I've tried, <laughs> but I haven't gotten it yet, so maybe one day I will. Uh, but if I eventually do, then it would be great to try and maybe be a speaker at Minecon. You know, um, a different YouTuber who's very similar to my content, OMG Chad, their channel's kind of dead now, unfortunately. Um, but uh, they were the host of Minecon multiple times, and their big thing was actually being a Minecraft tutorial YouTuber. So I don't think it's out of the question that, you know, at some point in the future, uh, if I really try for it, maybe I could, you know, at least do like a small sort of presentation or maybe part of a panel at, at Minecon one time. So we'll see what happens, but that would definitely be like a, a really great way of sort of um, talking to a huge amount of people about Minecraft at the same time, kind of sharing my opinion on that, and uh, yeah, just being an influence on the Minecraft community for the better. And we're getting so much of this mountain chopped down, it's awesome. Um, someone says, hello, Dr. Eyeball. I have a question, how to get the goat horn? Thanks for the compliment of my amazing iris here. Well, to get the goat horn in Minecraft, what you want to do is you want to have a goat ram into what's known as a naturally occurring block. Now, that's actually a really misleading term uh, because a naturally occurring block does not mean that it's like a, you know, uh, budding amethyst. Or in fact, well, actually, much better yet, it does not mean it functions like a skulk shrieker where like when it's placed down it doesn't do anything but if it naturally generated it works so it doesn't mean that but it means like blocks that would kind of be where the goat is there is a list of those um which is oh i should not have broken that with fortune but anyway there is a list of those blocks on the goat wiki uh but fundamentally you want them to run into that so you can do that by setting up armor stands but i actually have a goat farming guide and in that guide i have a goat firm i talk about i did not create the design but i did modify the design off of a different design that seems like a lot of people were using Using. And I tried using some kind of cheaper materials. So if you want to know a great goat farming design, I do have that on my goat farming guide. So that would be kind of my suggestion of how to get uh, goat horns in Minecraft. And we have a person that says they're back with the tours. And they said, good thing um, I haven't stopped streaming because they've watched every second. Well, that's awesome. I'm going to keep streaming for a while too. So you can uh, capture even more of the stream and um, yeah, again, thank you to everyone. Uh, concurrent viewers has been amazing, which I think is mostly due to have gained so many subs recently. I know a lot of viewers right now have subbed really recently. In fact, someone actually said they're new and they'd love an introduction. In fact, I'd love to give that because like I said, a lot of my viewers are quite new here. Uh, we gained about f almost 50,000 viewers um, since kind of mid-December. Or 50,000, not viewers, but 50,000 subscribers. And so, uh, basically, of course, I am iCraftMC. I've been creating Minecraft videos for about two and a half years here. And uh, my channel blew up uh, last year. So, uh, I said this earlier in the stream, but crazy enough, literally one year from today, I had like 9,000 subs. You know, I, I basically was... Uh, maybe, maybe I might have actually had 10,000, but it was a lot less than, of course, like the almost 300,000 I have now. Um, and yeah, I just make Minecraft tutorials and facts videos and um, really have a passion for the game. If you want to learn even more about me, I have like multiple Q&As I've done. So if you look up um, iCraftMC Q&A, or you can just kind of scroll down, um, they're all done as subscriber specials, and I just realized I... Yeah, I just realized this pickaxe is almost broken. That was really close. Anyway, <laughs> um... You can learn more about me that way. And uh, yeah, and I, <laughs> I am now out of durability on my pickaxes. Definitely, they're both in the full, uh, full run out of durability. Those sort of power bar kind of things they show you are 
both completely empty. So we're just going to grab any blocks that are sitting here and go back. But look at this, we've gotten rid of so much of this mountain, which is great. And once this area is completely flattened, it's on to basically um, getting the entire area ready for actually building, planning out the build. And these are exciting things, like I was saying earlier. Uh, feel free to join my Discord as I may do a competition on there, um, getting build designs for... Uh, my base and of course you know probably not the whole design uh, but just some ideas for different building textures and things so if you're a minecraft builder even if you're not uh, feel free to join my discord we have all kinds of cool things on there honestly and uh, let's see what this wandering trader is selling because why not we'll see if there's something interesting here and if there is uh, maybe any trades we enjoy we do have five uh, emeralds for a jungle sapling we have five emeralds for for a propagule Hmm. I don't think we have a mangrove swamp nearby. So a propagule would actually be like really, really useful. It's always worthwhile to look at the trades that the uh, wandering traders give. Because as that example right there, a propagule is something we need. It is something useful. So, you know, of course, in general, the wandering traders tend to be annoying. Uh, but in this scenario, it's actually a good thing. So we're going to mine some of these ores. A lot of people don't like it when you mine emerald ore, but we're going to do it anyway. There we go. We now have 15. That should be enough. We'll grab them some propagules. Um, again, I may be forgetting we might have some propagules nearby, but I don't think we do. So we're going to grab that. Anything else here of use? Not really. We'll just grab all the propagules. There we go. And then we'll get rid of this wandering trader because it's a pain. And we'll get these llamas. Uh, trader llamas are a, actually different mob than standard llamas, and they work differently too. So if I was ever to do a... Um, guide talking about llamas i definitely throw in the wandering traders trader llamas too uh since yeah they are technically considered a different mob so we got two leads five leather five leather is great actually for that little and uh the mangrove propagules and we'll bring that back to our base and those propagules are going to be great because yeah we do not have um any kind of uh mangrove type items so we are going to use those for sure now we need to mend these things and we're gonna go back to where we're gonna mend them i was gonna go back to the portal people fly back why not um someone says new player question why do people get mad at mining emerald great question uh it's kind of for good reason it's basically because trading with villagers is super overpowered and it's super easy to get tons and tons and tons of emeralds by trading with villagers. You know, standard emeralds, not emerald ores. So emerald ores are kind of a useless item in the sense that they're not really a good source of emeralds. Because emeralds are a good source of emeralds is trading with villagers. And so because of that, it's kind of a bad idea, you know, fundamentally, to be mining emerald ore of any type, especially if it's deep slate emerald ore, because the best way of getting yourself emeralds is not by mining emerald ore, but instead it is by trading with villagers. And so the idea would be emerald ore should be kind of saved for like different projects, for, you know, different builds and things, whereas standard emeralds should be used for uh, trading. And so that's kind of where that comes from. So definitely not a, uh, it definitely makes sense, like it's for a good reason for sure. Um, yeah, overall, that's kind of the reason why that is. It looks like there is a uh, uh, Enderman that was around there. So we're going to probably harvest some stuff from here. We'll put up some torches so we can see. There are some Shriekers right there. We're probably still at our higher warning level, maybe. Actually, I don't think we would be, but either way, we'll put this in our offhand. Let's start mending this up. You'll see the amazing speed of this. Um, this is a lot more fun than a mob farm, let's be honest. It's not as efficient, but it is more fun. And sometimes that's even better. And so we're going to go around here, we're going to mend this up pretty quick. These things, again, do tend to mend very, very quickly. Uh, someone says, could you theoretically create a warning, uh, warden spawning device using a warden uh, distraction device? Uh, no. So basically, wardens will only uh, spawn if a player distru disrupts the shrieker. Also, something of interest, uh, one shrieker cannot sustain more than one warden at a time. What do I mean by that? Let's say we have three Shriekers, and we set off one of them, and one of them sets off and gives us a Warden. Well, if we set off that same Shrieker again, we're not going to get a second Warden from the same Shrieker. Let's say we set off a different Shrieker, we will get another Warden. So basically the way it works is that each Shrieker can only have one Warden that's currently in the game that's attached to it. Now let's say the Warden from that first Shrieker despawns, then that Shrieker can then summon in another Warden. 
Through this functionality, it basically limits the ability for players to, let's say, capture one Shrieker and use that one Shrieker to summon in hundreds and hundreds of Wardens. Although overall, I think that would be a good effect. That is an important thing to know. And so let's say in a world you're trying to like set up a big trap by having a bunch of Wardens down, you're going to have to collect a ton of different Shriekers to actually have your system work effectively. And those Shriekers are all going to have to be set off by a player. So that's kind of the answer to your question there and a bit more information on how Shriekers work. Someone says, do I use totems? And they say they don't because they're too OP. Um, well, I have nothing against using OP items, although I do think that certain things in the game might be able to be balanced better, although totems aren't actually something I would rebalance. I think they're fine. Uh, the issue, um, well, not the issue, but the reason why I don't have a totem on me right now is mostly uh, because I don't really want a big totem always in the corner of the screen. Um, and also, we're not in hardcore, so the risk of us dying isn't really that high, and even if it was a high risk of dying, it doesn't really matter, because we don't actually have, um, we haven't actually died in this world for a long time, so um, I feel pretty confident in my skills to not die during the stream, and if I do die though, it's always a lesson of what to do if you die in Minecraft, so that's kind of the reason why I don't have a totem on me, um, but I do have some totems in a chest, we got them from a woodland mansion, of course woodland mansions are not the standard way of getting totems anymore, they used to be. Of course this changed in 1.14 with the village and pillage update, but overall um, that is kind of the reason and what my thoughts are on that. Uh, but it is a good idea to have totems with you generally, and if you're in hardcore I would never suggest anything other than always having a totem on you, that is definitely the best idea inside of hardcore Minecraft. And so of course we have that. Someone says, why is my XP not going up? Also a great question. Uh, this used to be a bit different, but the way it works now in Minecraft is that if you're gaining XP, uh, your XP bar will not raise if the XP is all being sent to your mending tool. So that XP is not being put into sort of our own personal XP storage bank, it is being put into our tool. And so once our tool is fully mended, and we'll see that in a little bit here, you'll notice that XP bar will start going up again. That's kind of an interesting functionality, because we're taking that XP, we're turning it into kind of the magical power to heal our mending tool. Now that's kind of how it works in the lore. And then basically, um, you know, once we are done using up all that XP to turn it into the durability on our tool, then the XP on our hotbar will start going up but only if every single mending thing we also have on us is mended. So we have the mending elytra, and that mending elytra, if it had da uh, damage on it, uh, that would also mend, kind of like 50-50 mending between the elytra and between the uh, tool. And then basically once the elytra was done being mended, then also again that XP bar would go up, and it would go up very quickly, because we're actually gaining a ton of XP right now, Although, of course, again, it doesn't look like it. Uh, we're using a huge amount of XP to mend these tools, uh, which definitely is a good thing, as, of course, then we can get uh, the tool durability to be high enough to enable us to knock down that entire mountain. And we'll eat some food, too. Breaking blocks does lower your hunger, or it kind of raises your hunger, I guess. And so, because of that, if we're breaking a ton of blocks with instant mining, you will get pretty hungry pretty quickly. Someone says, is there official Minecraft lore? Ah, uh, that's a good question. Not really, to be honest. And I remember actually when they were talking about Minecraft Legends, um, Minecraft Legends is, uh, you know, has kind of what would seem like Minecraft lore in it, uh, but that lore is not actually official to sort of the base game. Um, they actually said that specifically. So, like, technically, in the lore of Minecraft Legends, ruined portals are the way that piglins went from the nether to the overworld. And so if we think about it that way, it's like, well, then is that what's true in... Uh, Minecraft itself, and that's not actually what's true in Minecraft itself because um, it's not confirmed in the lore for the main game. And I think it's good in a sense that Minecraft decided not to confirm any official lore. The reason why I think that is really simple. It enables Minecraft to be a game that is fully able, fully able to be up to their own player's imagination, you know? If, if you're a player that just started playing the game and you imagine the rune portals are there because maybe the ghasts, originally a very small creature that resembled a player, were able to make portals, decide to go to the other side, and the overworld, they kind of morphed into squids, if that's your theory, then nothing's wrong with that theory. And I think that, you know, it might be a bit silly, 
but enables you at every stage of the game to have the game be what you want it to be. And that's really what Minecraft's about, is a fully customizable gaming experience. And that's why Minecraft's the most popular game is because, again, people can, you know, play the game by just doing PvP mini games, or people can play the game by doing hardcore, or by doing survival SMPs, or by building in creative, um, or by even just exploring around the world and, you know, ex you know, talking about the lore of different uh, survival features. And so I think, you know, in a sense, it's actually good that there is no confirmed official lore for Minecraft. Someone says it also lets the player have their own story. Exactly. I mean, if you're going through the world and you find like a, a desert temple, you know, you could imagine that desert temple was maybe an ancient Egyptian artifact that you found. And maybe if you find an enchanted golden apple in there, that could have been like, you know, an ancient sort of, um, I don't know, like some, maybe some sort of like an ancient like carving or something or an ancient, uh, you know, model, and uh, you can kind of take that, maybe put it in a museum or something, and like mark it as, you know, found in an ancient, you know, Egyptian pyramid or something, even if that's not really true, uh, it's true enough to be part of sort of your own lore of the game, so definitely that's a good point as well. Someone says, what do you think currently makes Minecraft one of the best games currently? Kind of the thing I was saying already, just the fact that it is a fully customizable thing. And as someone was saying earlier, my XP bar is now going up because I've mended all of my tools. You'll notice here, actually really, really uh, quickly, the XP I have is going up very, very fast. We should be careful here because there are some shriekers. In fact, speaking of that, let's see if we get a warden. We shouldn't, but we might. Uh, we didn't. We will go back. And uh, yeah, we now have our um, tools there fully mended again. So we'll go back up the top here. We do have the darkness effect too. And I'll go over here. And uh, someone says I need to make so, uh, survival guides in a hardcore and do things like trapping every single mob in a hardcore world and draining an ocean monument. Um, I definitely have thought of that. It might be something I'll do this year is, you know, sort of those those kinds of videos. They tend to be insanely popular. Um, but I do want to make sure that I continue on my channel to actually be teaching people how to play the game. Because there's not a lot of channels that really do that. They go through every single feature of the entire game. There's been some videos I've made where there's not been a single other video by a creator that has more than a couple hundred subscribers on that topic. Things like, let's say, my Amethyst Geode Guide, or maybe the Rail Guide I'm about to put out. These subjects are just not covered by most people and so I want to make sure that no matter what series I'm doing I'm still enabling myself on my channel to actually be doing what's one of my goals which is to teach people how to play Minecraft and how to become better at the game so not only are you seeing me play the game in a skilled way but you're also able to then take that knowledge and use it to uh, improve your own skills which is something I would do in no matter what video I'd make I'm sure. Now it's definitely nighttime out there and we're going to get up to the top and we can kind of, I was supposed to say we're going to put all our items away because I was thinking, oh, we're mining items. We're doing all this work, but we're not really mining items because they're not dropping anything but experience and experience is invisible, at least in our inventory. And so, um, of course, because of that, uh, we don't have any items to put away. And, you know, something I don't know a lot about in Minecraft, but I want to learn more about is the night sky. It is so interesting. It's probably just like a random texture file. But like, has anyone ever bothered to like look for constellations? Like, is there like a creeper constellation out here? I don't think there is, or I'm sure someone would have mentioned it before. But like, I wonder if there is. Like, maybe like if it's all random, like different seeds have different sky maps. I honestly don't know. If someone knows in the uh, uh, chat there, that would be interesting. You can notice too, the stars do get bigger if we zoom in with our FOV. It's like if we're really zoomed out, you can see the stars look smaller. If we go like this, they kind of look more normal. But uh, yeah, that is an interesting part of the game for sure. And we'll go over here and um, we do a four lapis lazuli or may as well mine that. I think uh, earlier on, our pickaxes are messed up here. I do think earlier on we had the issue of um, having uh, not enough lapis, but now we have tons and tons of lapis. So we're good there. We got like exactly over a stack, a stack and one. And so that's a good thing. And there we go. And we'll, we'll sleep tonight too, I guess. Yeah, it's been like certain things in the game, like let's say, uh, you know, stars in the sky, like no one talks about it, you know, but it's there. It's part of the game. It's just not discussed because Minecraft is such a big game. It's very hard to cover everything. All right, so we are going to fly back, I guess. We're going to grab the gunpowder, though, we have in these chests and first use that to craft ourselves more fireworks because uh, we're going to need more fireworks and we're also going to need more uh, paper to make those fireworks. So let's go through here. 
let's grab those fireworks. Let's uh, craft those. And I guess there's some more sugar cane. I did see some more gunpowder. We put it away, I believe. Uh, I know some of it's also at the mega base kind of temporary area, whatever we want to call it. Uh, it's not really a mega base yet, of course, so it's not necessarily the best name so far. Uh, but we will fly over there. Although I guess we're kind of trying to save rockets. It's okay. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll take a look at that. We'll probably glide most of the way. We'll take a look at that. Now we have... There's our base. You can see we've, yeah, we've dug it down a lot, honestly. It's looking way better. Uh, it's definitely nowhere near done. Uh, but we're getting a lot of work done. Like, I'd say we're probably two-thirds done with it. Hard to say exactly, but there's a lot of progress being made. Uh, for sure. So there's 10 more gunpowder there. We'll turn this into paper. We'll get ourselves a bunch of paper. Uh, one more uh, batch, and then there we go. And that is over a stack of fireworks again, which is perfect. We'll put some of those in the ender chest, actually, for like an emergency supply. Actually, we'll do th uh, like that. Or, th yeah, 32 in the ender chest, uh, 39 in our hot bar, or in our kind of offhand slot, shield slot, whatever you want to call it. But it is called the offhand. I just happen to know that offhand. And then we'll um, put that over here. And I will continue mining this away. Now, let's take a look here. Someone says, do you think every tool should break like Elytra? Uh, no. No, I think that would be too easy. But I do think it'd be good if it, like, started making a different sound. Like, let's say for the last 50 durability breaking, you'd, you'd hear, like, kind of, you know, cracking or, you know... Um, kind of metal breaking sounds like it kind of give you some warning uh, that would be good but I don't think it should necessarily like break into uh, you know a, a repairable form necessarily and we have a super chat for uh, 10 pounds from David Morehouse and it says thanks for all the great Minecraft content I watch a lot of Minecraft content and you're one of my favorites learn a ton from you and really enjoy your style well I'm so glad uh, that you do enjoy my video style and that you enjoy my content and thank you so much for the uh, 10 pound super chat there um, i really appreciate the support and i'm so glad that i can help you and so many other people uh, learn how to play minecraft again biggest thing i would suggest if you're just kind of just found my channel is look through my videos i would say everything i made in 2022 i'm happy with um, i have a lot of older videos that are um, not highest quality uh, they're not high quality almost at all um, but I, a lot, like basically all my ultimate guides, um, if you look at those playlists, if you look at most of the things I made in 2022, there's a lot of hidden gems in there, videos that didn't get a lot of views, but have interesting topics, you know, things about the future of Minecraft, I have a video guessing what 1.20 will be, obviously we know what 1.20 will be now, but, um, none of my guesses were correct, which means that every single thing I guessed could technically be possible for 1.21, so like maybe check out that video, take a look at some of the other things, and, uh, just get a good look at those and someone says I broke an emerald block I did and you can it's probably sitting on the ground or it's this one in my inventory right here and we have that someone says if someone just starting a minecraft world what's my path to end game well speaking of content I've made that's a video that I have uh, it is the ultimate minecraft survival guide in one video I talk about going from uh, nothing to Elytra. So that's not necessarily endgame, uh, but it's definitely what some people would consider endgame. And if that's endgame to you, then that video covers your topic. If you're thinking more about, you know, um, like tons of farms and massive mega bases and massive kind of projects, uh, I have not yet made a video on that, but that is something I'll definitely cover in the future as well. And we're going to go through here. We're almost done, actually, breaking all this, which is great. Uh, this mountain's definitely getting torn down, uh, which is good. And, yeah, we can just get, like, tons of this stuff put away. Now, someone says, how does my character eat baked potatoes without a mouth? Great question. Um, I know the answer to it. So, this creature um, is kind of like this alien species I invented when I was, like, seven years old. So, there's your little backstory there to this sort of alien creatures. Some people think it's supposed to look like a guardian, or it's supposed to look like like Mike Wazowski or something from uh, from Monsters, Inc., but it is not either, and it is um, basically a uh, creature, kind of like a one-eyed alien creature. Um, some of the uh, I, when I worked with the artist to make all the emotes, I kind of made sure it was consistent with the lore of this character, which I might talk about more in future videos, but uh, more or less what it does 
is it'll basically just absorb things like a cell. So it would like take that potato, just kind of like absorb it, and it would just kind of like digest it inside of itself. So it has eating sounds, but they're really a deception. It's really just like osmosising that that potato into itself, and then turning the potato into pure food energy, which is uh, a lot um, more interesting than it would probably look in real life. <laughs> but anyway, speaking of breaking emeralds, as people were saying, there's like two of them right there, which is great. In fact, three is a nice big cluster of the emeralds. They like kind of uh, generating diagonally, which is interesting. And we have that. Someone says, oh, interesting, potato absorption. Yes, it's very interesting. <laughs> Anyway, it does look like I'm kind of eating it though. And like in Bedrock, of course, the player kind of sticks food up to their mouth. So for me, it kind of looks like I'm sticking food in my eye, which would um, not taste very good, uh, I would assume. So probably not the um, probably not the best thing, you know, to stick food in your eye. I would not necessarily recommend that, um, at least if you're not an alien creature, uh, which I'm guessing most of my viewers aren't. Uh, but you never know. I'm going to go through here. You know, the craziest thing about YouTube is the fact that, like, when, you know, this video, unless, like, you know, the entire, you know, YouTube just is destroyed, which maybe it would be at some point in the future, I don't know, probably not. It's like, this video will be, like, you know, historical record, like, someone might be like, oh, you know, you're great. You know, your great uncles and nephews, cousin made this video, you know, 300 years ago, and here's the history of it, and it's still up on YouTube, and, you know, no one's... Like, everyone who was, like, a fan of his, they're all, you know, they were, this is all 300 years ago in the digital era or whatever, but, like, it's funny how, you know, technically, if we're, if we're thinking that digital systems are going to exist forever, that is exactly what would happen, right? Like, everything here is, like, an eternal archive. It's, like, it'll live longer than anyone will, which is really strange to think, you know? Because, um, like, obviously a lot of social media platforms did kind of fail, like, let's say, Vine or MySpace or these really old ones, and, um... You know, a lot of the content there is still there, but uh, some digital content does disappear, but on YouTube so far it hasn't. I mean, we still have, you know, uh, videos from 2005 and stuff, like the, the first video of people going to the zoo. So it is it is kind of a funny thing for sure. Someone th says, do I think that Pocket Edition is one of the things that's limiting Bedrock Edition? Um... No, although I do think that Pocket Edition is something that makes Bedrock Edition more complicated uh, in terms of, you know, what can be added to it. Um, I believe the bundles weren't added because of a Pocket Edition issue. You know, the issue with Pocket Edition in general is I don't know if anyone honestly likes Pocket Edition, you know? Like, if you honestly ask someone, it's like, would you rather play Minecraft on a great gaming PC or a great, you know, um, gaming console uh, or on, you know, a phone? most people are probably going to say the console or the computer. Now, obviously, there's the convenience of just, you know, playing on the go. Most people, I mean, like, basically everyone has a phone. Most people don't actually have a really expensive gaming computer or, you know, although I'd say probably more so people would have a console. So, you know, I think, like, ideally, everyone's going to kind of go for, you know, um, not playing on Pocket Edition if they could. Um, but I don't think it's holding anything back. It's not a bad version at all. Um, I've not really actually played it that much before. Uh, maybe sometime if I, uh, like, an interesting video would be, like, playing Pocket Edition, like, kind of for the first time. Because, again, I basically played it, like, once before. Um, so I don't know a whole lot about Pocket Edition in terms of its very specific, um, differences. But the great news is it is pretty similar to Bedrock Edition in almost all ways. And Pocket Edition's a great version, really. I mean, um, the fact that Minecraft can actually be controlled on a touch screen that's that small is, is a pretty, like, good feat. That they were able to code it that way. And it's not, like, completely terrifyingly annoying, you know. So it's not a, it's definitely not a bad version in any real sense. And, um, yeah, no, it is a... It is not holding anything back, though, and, like, in terms of, like, technical things, too, I mean, Minecraft recently has, like, almost every update, they'll be like, oh, now we have to have these system requirements, so it's like, you know, they're fine with letting Minecraft be kind of limited to more newer devices and things. I don't really think that, I mean, mo a lot of phones nowadays are almost as powerful as a cheap gaming console, you know, so, um, no, I don't, I don't really see it holding back the game. Um, someone says um, you can play Pocket Edition uh, multiplayer with Bedrock. You can, and actually you can join my Minecraft server on Pocket Edition too. So um, if you want to, I, I mention my Minecraft server sometimes, my SMP, you can join that by joining the Discord. Link is in the sort of pinned uh, 
where I get, uh, yeah, the pinned chat there and also in the description. Um, if you've been thinking, oh, I can't play on the server because I'm on Bedrock or I'm on Pocket Edition, it actually works on Windows 10 and on Pocket Edition. I don't believe it works on consoles, although I may be wrong, um, but it totally works on, uh, on uh, Pocket Edition, yeah. So that is a cool way people can kind of join the server and still enjoy a survival experience. Uh, play with iCraft MC if I'm on Java, and you're also on uh, Pocket. So we'll go over here. Uh, great thing about these kind of multiple version servers too, and a lot of people forget about this, really good to know, is you know a lot of people might play Minecraft with like a friend or a family member, and maybe your you know friend plays on a phone, you play on a computer. It's like, well, we can't play together then. But you actually can if you're on my Minecraft server or on a different server that also has, of course, the uh, cross connectivity sort of thing. And so because of that, you could actually play Minecraft with someone you've never played it with before, um, just because of the fact that there is that connectivity to it, which is really cool. Uh, someone says thoughts on Hypixel and Bed Wars. I actually have a YouTuber rank on Hypixel. I don't play on Hypixel a lot, um, but I do enjoy it. I think that, you know, um, to me it's really just a different game. Um, just because it's obviously so different from survival Minecraft, even from creative Minecraft. Um, but it is a good thing, and I think, you know, overall, um, I'm not obviously some sort of, like, uh, skilled player at, at Hypixel minigame just because I barely play. Um, but I do think it's a cool part of the game, and it is, like, really awesome that people can actually still be getting that much enjoyment and, and being able to do so much with, like, a really old version of the game, and also have a great community on Hypixel and sort of the connections there. Like, I know a lot of people have been trying to create new Minecraft servers. Like, I think Tubnet's a big thing I've been hearing about with, um... Tubbo there has been, like, creating a kind of, like, a Hypixel sort of clone, I think was how he described it. Um... Um, but even then, like, I don't think it's done, done, like, phenomenally well, just because people kind of, you know, uh, find something they like and they don't necessarily want something different. But overall, no, Hypixel is definitely a good server, and, uh, yeah. I know a lot of YouTubers, it's crazy to think that, like, people can gain millions of subscribers just making videos on Hypixel. I mean, obviously, you know, Technoblade was someone who did that. It wasn't only Hypixel, but it was mostly. And, um, you know, even... Uh, current YouTubers still, like, there's still definitely, um, like, Purpled or something. Some of these people are still quite big YouTubers and mostly just from Hypixel and, uh, minigames and things. Someone says, what is the use of the adventure game mode? The adventure game mode is, uh, interesting, interesting game mode. It's mostly for map makers, uh, or if you want to have someone kind of tour your world. Let's say you have a friend, and they're not the most trustworthy friend, but you do want to have them kind of take a look at your Minecraft world. Adventure mode, there's your answer. Let them take a look at the world. They can also take things out of chests, unfortunately, although you can limit that in other ways. Um, but they cannot break blocks. And so it's kind of for map makers if they want to, like, enable people to, you know, um, do different things. Let's say, like, in the lobby of my uh, server, adventure mode would be good there, obviously, because then people can look around the lobby. They can't destroy it. They can't place blocks. So it's kind of like that. It's for, like, a limited game mode. And, yeah, it's overall... A pretty interesting part of the game. Um, nothing, you know, again, absurdly interesting, um, but it's mostly for map makers, and that's kind of the point of it. Um, between, of course, the four game modes of survival, creative, uh, uh, adventure, and spectator, uh, it's definitely the most kind of niche. And also, thank you to David Morehouse, which I believe was the same person who uh, uh, had a super chat earlier. Uh, welcome to the Ice Squad, and hopefully you enjoy all the uh, benefits that come with that. Um, for anyone who has a membership and also has Discord, um, if you link your Discord to your, or if you link your YouTube um, to your Discord, which is really easy, Discord kind of shows how to do this, uh, then you can actually get the rank for that in the Discord as well. We have that. Someone says um, they have not watched my previous stream. Should they watch it? I try and make most streams be kind of standalone in what we're doing, uh, but I would feel free. You know, if I were you, I definitely would watch it. There's a lot of interesting things in that stream. Uh, quite an adventurous stream. We're doing a end raid, or a, not an end raid, but a deep dark raid. And in that deep dark raid, we summon in a bunch of wardens, and we get a whole lot of treasure. So definitely worth the watch. And there's actually a playlist on my channel. You can see that on my channel playlist page or just on the uh, home page of my channel by scrolling down. And I have a playlist of every single one of these Survival Live live streams. You can see basically how I got exactly to the point where I'm speaking right now. 99% of it all on live streams. And uh, yeah, you can just kind of take a look at the entire progression. Maybe look at a certain part of the progression chain for certain areas. You know, maybe I'm 
doing something more specific, like let's say raiding the end, or for certain parts it's just more general stuff, like let's say just exploring around or doing different things like what we're doing today, just mining out this mountain, and as well as that getting those villagers over here from the other village, and just kind of preparing for eventually our big base that'll be here. And that's kind of the point of live streams in a sense, is, you know, um, sort of showing the game as it is, uh, not necessarily in a very uh, cut up way, although of course most people enjoy edited videos better. Also interesting to have this kind of an experience for sure. And someone says, have you ever played uh, Subnautica? Um, I have not, although I do have a relative that really likes that game, and so I've watched them play it quite a bit and it does seem like a pretty cool game uh, for sure and has a great soundtrack too actually. Someone says, do I think it's acceptable to use creative in a survival world? Well, I think that people can play Minecraft whatever way they enjoy it. If you find that using creative in a survival world doesn't ruin the experience for it, you, then don't feel bad about using creative in a survival world. If using creative in a survival world does ruin the experience for you, then definitely don't do that. You know, that's what I would kind of say about even just like cheating or whatever in the game in general. If you're playing on your own and you're just trying to have fun, there's no real, you know, cheating in the game. It's just simply playing in whatever way you enjoy most. For me, I found that the game is made much less fun and I enjoy it far less if I'm cheating. And so because of that, I don't cheat in my survival worlds. I could, but I don't. And the reason why is just because I enjoy it better if I'm not cheating. Just like hardcore mode's kind of fake in the sense that there's like 50 different ways that you can totally cheat in hardcore just as easy as in any other world. But people don't do that and the point of hardcore is not so that you can just cheat to make it just like standard survival. It's to enjoy that extra challenge um, because it is a self-imposed thing. So that's what I would say in terms of that. Although, of course, you know, if you are trying to make like a legitimate world, if you want to claim something as being as in survival and you're using creative, then that's obviously not fair. Um, but yeah, like it's just in terms of your personal world, it's whatever you want, really. Someone says, what was that sound? Um, that was me simply uh, switching from a track. It was playing the... Uh, um, the, I think it was 11 music disc, the one that has like the kind of very um, sort of scary sounds or whatever to it, because I thought not necessarily the best, um, not really reflect the mood, we're just on a peaceful mountain, suddenly we're getting chased by monsters underground and the music there, so um, not really the best, uh, but anyway, um, we do definitely have that as well. Now I think that what we're probably going to do, oh that's not good. Oh no, I see. Sorry, the stream replay is being weird for me. Anyway, basically what we're going to do is we are going to finish up the last little bit. We've kind of finished this, so if you notice, unfortunately it goes even lower, so we have to go four blocks lower. Uh, what we'll do is we'll cut like a big trench, and there's so many ores here, so much coal, so much iron. You know, I, I say this a lot, and it's true, the best place to get coal, the best place to get iron in Minecraft outside of, you know, like an iron golem farm or something, or a large iron ore vein, is 100% the stony peaks. So if you ever find a stony peaks, mark down those coordinates, go up there, get yourself stone. Uh, you will not regret it, and you will not regret the amount of ores, the amount of coal, and even emeralds. You can see there's lots of emeralds here, and, you know, we don't really need emeralds, but if we wanted them, if we wanted to build with emeralds, uh, this would be the way to do it. And so, that is kind of how that works, and uh, we can just, again, keep digging through here. Should be to the other end fairly soon, we'll find out. Uh, not really, but, oh, well, we've gotten some, somewhat of a trench already. We have that. Um... And it's also raining, so as well as a trench, we need like a trench coat. Uh, but anyway, I kind of have like a coat on actually. My skin is so interesting. People talk about it sometimes. So I did create my own skin um, quite a while ago. It was a bit different before actually. I used to, it had like a pink tie, which it wasn't meant to be pink. I just had like the colors wrong. It was meant to be purple. And it's definitely purple now. And, uh, and the buttons were a different color too. And the pants there are gray. They used to be blue. Um, but I do enjoy the gray ones more. It's supposed to be like a lab coat, um, or maybe even just like a white suit coat, honestly, but you know, kind of a lab coat. And then we have like the pants there and like the shoes. The only thing I'm not sure about is a little shine on the shoes there. I don't know. <laughs> I tend to change my, like I tend to like try and like tweak little things about my skin too much already. So I'll probably just keep it as it is. And uh, it's definitely very iconic to my channel, the sort of uh, alien and lab coat look. But anyway, this is going to be the end of the stream and i want to thank everyone for joining on the stream thank you to all my viewers i'm looking forward to an amazing year in 2023 for the channel i know it's kind of you know halfway into the first month already but you know 
first stream of the year, and I hope that you have a great rest of your Saturday, and uh, feel free to check out the rest of my videos. If you want more iCraft content, if you just joined the stream, it's like, what do I do? I want to watch more iCraft. Then check out my videos uh, on my channel, tons of playlists. There is enough content to binge all Saturday if you want to, <laughs> and I will see you in the next stream. I hope you have a good rest of your day. Goodbye.